Beats in the hood. What it good be, hope it's what it should be. This is your boy N O R E. What up, it's DJ E F N. And this is motherfucking classic Drink Chess. Make some noise! And right now, when I tell you, man, this man basically raised me with his music, man. Legend. This man has been out here, you know what I mean, uh, a monkey foot in the game for years. We've been working out to it all week, listening to his music just to, to, to brush up on what's going on. Man, the man is. Is, is, is a legend, a legend. He's an icon. His wordplay, the shit that he was doing back then, yeah. holy moly guacamole, and still doing now, still got festivals, still got shit going on. In case you don't know the fuck we talking about, we talking about what? Only special hey! <laughs> Now, this is a song where I was going through your catalog. This is a song immediately, and never go back. Yeah. Man. Is that Can I Live? Sample? Nah, can I live sampled? Never go back. That's what I'm saying. That's what, yeah, that's yeah, what I mean. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Well, I, yeah, I came out first with it. That was produced by Hitman Howie T. And first, let me Hitman just say, T. send my love and respect in regards to Hitman Howie T. Man, he changed my life. Wow. He changed a lot of people's lives, man. But mine especially, man. Since I was uh, 15 years old. Wow. So make some noise for he also produced for Chub Rock too, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, Chub Rock, Lil uh -huh. Sean, Puma, Whistle, UTFO, The mm -hmm. Real Roxanne, and the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's let's get back to uh, what we were talking about before that. Oh, we getting started. Never go back. The, the sample, the sample, yeah, yeah. the sample, the sample. Because I'm listening to it, and I'm like, wow, sample, did Jay get that off of you? Um, absolutely. At least, the, <laughs> at least the idea, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I put it out first. Uh, uh -huh. I mean, the way it goes in hip hop is when you hear something and then you do it. You did it based who, who, on what you sample? heard. Isaac Hayes. Who is it? How he did that, I don't know. We could look on. I feel on like who, that's an Isaac Hayes. You could look on who sample or whatever, but right. yeah, how he. I just come in. I just come in the studio and how he got it playing. Mm -hmm. I actually wrote that joint in probably about thirty minutes, the whole song. Man. Really? Because um, that's how charged I was off the beat. I was right. like, oh, yeah, this shit is hard. Right. And it's the kind of it's, Hayes, yeah, yeah, it's the kind of vibe and level you could really kind of freestyle. But there was factors involved. He was at the time he was working with Lil Vicious. Wow, Lil so Lil Vicious. Man, yeah, 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 so I threw them in there. Mm -hmm. Donovan, shout outs to the hustler. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, that, I see you got the St. Nori, your host. <laughs> yeah. All praises do, St. Yeah, yeah. Nori. <laughs> yeah. We saint you, we saint Dream Chance. Oh, over here. yes, you do. Oh, no. I need one, man. Yeah, I need yeah, a St. Yeah. Ed candle. Yeah. <laughs> Burn that shit all day. Yeah. 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 Right. And you're Trinidadian? No, nah, I'm Jamaican. Jamaican. Oh, yeah. okay. And that's one of the reasons. Why on my first record I said I'm not a Puerto Rican because right. coming from Brooklyn and so much cultural diversity in the wow. New York, wow. everybody thought I was everything Dominican, yeah. Puerto Rican, yeah, you do look all of that, you look all that, everything. So I had to kind of dispel that one time, right. but I never got the answer Jamaican from anybody. Right, you feel right. Me? Yeah. No, because I always, um, I mean, listen to your music. We always hear when you pick up the Flatbush yeah. and all that. I, I always thought. That you were Guyanese. I always thought that, that yeah. to me, Guyanese is like Jamaican's cousins, right? Well, it's all from the Caribbean. <laughs> okay. It's all the Caribbean, okay. same areas, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's Puerto Rico and Cuba. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the colonizers. I believe what the language the colonizers spoke. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, right. yeah. I believe the first much. time I met you, I said, "Are you a Puerto Rican?" And I was like, "This motherfucker said that shit. That he's right. not a Puerto Rican." And I still, I was so high. <laughs> <laughs> so listen. All right, let's let's. Do you know you have arguably one of the best beats ever made in hip hop? Howie T. Once again. 
I got it made. Howie T Howie made it. Yo. Howie T changed my life, I didn't man. Know that. He actually produced the entire first album. Young, and, um, youngest in charge. Young, youngest in charge. Youngest and, in charge. And, and um at the time I was 15 years old, so I was just really rhyming, rhyming, rhyming. But I was actually going through the crates with him and mm-hmm. I was doing some producing myself. Mm-hmm. And he actually wanted to give me producer credit and I refused. I was uh, like, nah, uh-oh. man. I was well, like back then. Yeah, back right. then, because I was just honored to have him as So you would have been producer. the first puff daddy. Yeah. The first, like I am yeah. the first puff daddy. I am. <laughs> undoubtedly, <laughs> undoubtedly, <laughs> unequivocally. Yeah. You ain't had to trust nobody. Yes, yes, yes. Nah, and in, and in terms of that, now right. let's talk about that. We mm-hmm. are we invented all that remix shit. Woo. Period. Woo. So they could claim whatever they want, but mm-hmm. Howie T mm-hmm. was the one. Mm-hmm. Howie re- remixed everything, and mm-hmm. not just for me, for every other artist as well. Wow. So when they talk about remix this and we the remix that, no, y'all not, man. Wow. It's Howie T, Brooklyn, New York. Wow. Let's go. Let's make the noise. Period. Yeah. I came to put it on black. So, so, I so look, no, so I, last yeah. night, because I got the worst phone in the world, so I'm going to send this to Haz, because yeah. you got a better phone, right? <laughs> I mean. Track? Yes, this was this last How night. How we tee the remix Come on, King. You got it hooked up so you can play it? Oh, Yo, oh, little Bobby, yeah. little Bobby. How, how did you guys oh, connect, you and Howie T? Yeah. How we tee. Howie T lived across the street from my first cousins. Flatbush. So, yeah, so okay. we grew up. Right across the street from each other, and they were friends, family mm. friends. So, mm. um, I, I seen and knew them all my life. Like, when they first came out with like Get Tough in like 82, mm. 83, like we was a, we was there. I was there when they was, was he making Chub Rock DJs. He's Chub Rock cousin. Oh, okay, he's Chub Rock cousin. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. And I believe, um, Actually, Lil Sean had to bring him to Howie. Wow. Because he, you know, oh, wow. Wow. he was bashful, I guess. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But I wasn't. So I went to my cousin. I went, <laughs> I went to my cousin. And I was like, yo, take me across the street. Because when I was little, they used to hold my hand to walk across the street. That's right? how bad Brooklyn was? No, I was that little. Oh, that was that right? <laughs> But Brooklyn was always oh, what yeah, yeah, it yeah. was. But yeah, yeah. that's how long I've mm-hmm. been around mm-hmm. Howie T and production and all that stuff. So mm-hmm. they they used to take me across the street to watch them make mixtapes. They used to wow. have the set outside and DJ and have when the, the tape crew. came on a tape. Yeah, cassette. Yes, yes. And cassettes, they used to yes. have the crew out there with the mics. And to me, as a little dude, it was like incredible. I was like, oh uh, shit, they up here performing uh, in the driveway, in, uh, the, in the backyard uh, type shit. But they making mixtapes. You uh, know what I mean? And that was my first real uh, hands on exposure. Mm-hmm. And then one time he made a mixtape. And he remade the Bubble Bunch beat. Shout mm. out to Jimmy Spicer, man, because that's my other mm. biggest influence because he was from Flatbush, too. Mm. He was from Brooklyn. And um, uh. Super Rhymes, Bubble Bunch, Dollar uh. Bill, y'all. Uh. Yeah, that was Jimmy Spicer, man. I, I used to listen to that religiously. So you said you had, you just did a, uh, a concert in Coney Island. Oh, yeah. I curate. I do concerts. I did... Uh, Coney Island uh, uh, Hip Hop 50th Mm. with Summer Stage with City Parks Foundation. Okay. Yeah, and I got another one coming up on Sunday. I'm doing a Native Tongues tribute with Red Alert. What? Jungle Brothers, Chi Ali, Black Sheep Dress, Moni Love. Yeah. Oh, hell, you speak so long for that. Sunday, Sunday was incredible. I had an incredible lineup, man, right. and um, it was a bunch of CL smooth, nice and smooth. Right. Um, it was a I, man. I got a flyer, but my memory. But it was like twelve acts on there. Even right. even uh, Joe Ski Love. Oh even, wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who I had on there? Sparky D. Came wow. Out. Yeah. Wow. Sweet T. What's up with CL Smooth and P Rock, man? They can't get along. Well, I'm, I don't know, man. You know that's between them, but <laughs> but I do right, know right. that I'm I'm you know family with both of them. Right. And um, I always encourage them to give right. the people what they want because that's what it's about. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Anytime I see Discord, you know I know what that's about. You know right. we. I I, we done been through it I done yeah, been course. through it I've been in this yeah. game Over 30 years So mm-hmm. I know how it go You know what I'm saying And the most important thing though Is not to destroy The brand The legacy The legacy Because that's what The people want yeah. Sure right. they'll enjoy you Separately But at the end of the day It's really about That original that togetherness. Yes. Yeah that yes. original energy You know what I'm yeah. saying Do you recognize Flatbush anymore? 
do who? Me? Do you, do you recognize it? Oh, I recognize it, but I'm in awe of all the buildings they put up and they all got the Whole new Foods shit now, right? Yeah. I don't know if they got Whole Foods, but they got a Whole Foods lookalike <laughs> on Flatbush and Park Side. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Right, right, right. And um, they got a whole bunch of little eateries and shit. It's so many uh, other ethnicities out there. Sometimes I think it's police, man. I'd be mm. like, what the fuck going on? Is this a, a, a right. operation, an investigation? Because I used to go to Brooklyn in, around the 80s and, yeah. and things like that. And I would never sense that it's a place called Dumbo in Brooklyn. Do, have, you ever, have you been to Dumbo? Yeah, Dumbo is uh, under the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah, under the Brooklyn yeah, Bridge. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but yo, that was mad back white in the people. days. <laughs> back in the days, that was abandoned. That was like, really? It was warehouses. We actually shot Crooklyn down there. Get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, man. Crooklyn was shot in Dumbo. It the, was all with, with Buckshot. With Buckshot, the, the, Buckshot oh, and yeah. Ace. Oh, man. Buckshot Master Ace. Oh, yeah. Buckshot and Master Ace was on the show in Coney Island, and we did Crooklyn. Mm. Absolutely. Shout mm. out to Buckshot and Ace. Mm. See, my memory, I'm getting old, but you know, right. I know I know what we doing. Oh, right. yeah. Turn St. Nori around. St. <laughs> Nori, man. So, because so, I'm not going to lie, but, but Brooklyn is still Brooklyn, though. Like, Absolutely. Like, you still, oh, you still get it. You still, oh, you still get it. Because, <laughs> like, there's yeah. a place in Dumbo, and I enjoy going to well, Dumbo. See, all that is on the other side. That's on the of other side. They yes. still haven't given right. the proper attention to the rest of Flatbush, Brownsville, Brown. East New York, Red Hook, mm -hmm. even Coney Island. Like, mm. it's even though they fix up the park and the beach and the park. Stephon Baltimore, Marbury did a couple of things for Coney Island as well. Well, like, absolutely. I mm -hmm. mean, everybody's trying to do what they can for this for the town. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of the city actually putting those dollars into our communities and not just where they gentrifying. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That, that's what's happening. And uh, we got to, as a people, understand how this works. We have to go to the city planning meetings and see right. what's happening. Right. That's how they come in and move and buy everybody out because they know what's going to happen. Mm, that's how they gentrify the gentrification. Exactly. Mm. That's it's how it's going up. down. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. That's crazy, hell yeah. So look, and the thing, the thing about that is, you have to sample our record because if you try to get the original, it's not you, ain't gonna, like you ain't going, it ain't going to sound like the sample because wow. of how how we processed yeah. it. Wow, it's an OG production secret behind that. Right. So, so yeah. no matter what, if they try to go to the original, they still have to go to the to the, the original that y'all made. Right, because right. the original, when you sample it, it ain't going to have that pitch or that tone right. or, or the, the, to it. It's, right. it's going to sound totally different. So, so look, I just want you to look read the message. He just sends me this record out the blue. It is no... Look, just out the blue. That's the record right there. And I say, I say, crazy, crazy, crazy. And I interview Special Ed tomorrow. Amen. God is good. Amen. And he goes, That's right. Wow, 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 yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're dealing with, we're dealing with natural and supernatural yes. forces yes, right yes. now. Yes, that, that was, that Tell was you. like, I was like, cause I was like, yo. And you know, usually I, I put out, um, uh, when I interview an artist, I say, yo, you know, you got questions for him. But I didn't do that till this morning. Right. So there's no way that he could right. understand that. I was like, yo, this synthetic right. energy is working, man. Amen. So, so how many people have sampled that record? Man, I can't start to count. Right? Wow. A bunch, like dozens. From R&B. To hip hop. To hip hop. To reggae dome. Yeah, and, and a lot of them is, uh, you know, unreleased and new artists that you might not hear, but, you know, mm -hmm. they've had some that have gone a little bit and got a little airplay, a little buzz. But me personally, I feel like I don't touch that record because it's a classic. Right. And I don't want to even, you know, tarnish the, the right. reputation. You, got the you know what? You, you know what's the killer, though? The killer is... The, the, the killer part to that is I recorded this song at 15 years old. Get the fuck out so of here. Hold on, hold on. So you motherfucking 15 year old artists, you are stupid. Before. I, I wrote it prior to recording. So when I wrote that, I was probably between 14, yeah, yeah, 13, 14 Man, years man. old. Okay. Yeah. So describe this session. You go to Howie T. Yeah. And he's already got the beat playing? Uh, I got it made, yes. I believe we went through the digging and the sampling because I heard the process. I heard of how he uh -huh. truncated it and chopped it and uh -huh. did it. S950. I'm going to give y'all a little, a little jewels. Go. You know, S950 got some tools on it. Okay. So, yeah, he went through that and chopped it up, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's hard. Oh. And then what I started doing was piecing together my braggadocious rounds. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. To, it, but that was the style back right, then. Right, so, yeah. right, right. Well, see, it was either going to be a story or I'm going to diss you or I'm going to talk shit. Right, right, right. right? So I said, I'm going to talk shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And? I got it made. 
Yeah. That's God it. Damn. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. But that record has outlived the test of time. Okay. Amen. Like, I, I, I don't think there's no party in the world, I was gonna say America, but I don't think there's no party in the world that you can't put that on and everyone knows yeah. that record. Well, well, you know what it is? It's about programming. So the same way they programming negativity, I was programming mm. positivity and empowerment. Mm. I'm your idol, your the highest, highest title. title. So, mm. Right, so when you say those words, right. you empowering it's yourself. Mm. You manifesting mm. greatness, godliness, mm -hmm. you feel me? Mm -hmm. So that's what that was really about and that's why it resonates in my opinion That's why right. I still resonate The way it do right. And then in addition I wasn't talking Brand names And dating myself Right you know I, never, Gucci, I, I don't free Farragama, advertising yeah. No free advertising Right Y'all ain't free advertising Right, no, right. No, 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 Okay no. then No we outside I was Stop never <laughs> Never I was never into that You mm, feel me mm. And um, and I was ghost writing too At that age Like when wow. I was 15 years old I ghost So I wrote a record For the real Roxanne Oh wow Right And um, they never Ever pay me, so I like fuck those. <laughs> yeah, I'm like y'all robbing a little, y'all robbing kids. Fuck out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> fuck select records. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Robbing kids, man. That's Wait, who was select record? Wasn't that gangster? Fred Mineo, yeah. Uh -huh. Fred Mineo owned it, but Chubb okay. was on select. Okay, Chubb was on. Roxanne, I remember that. And I think okay. uh, was UTFO on select. I'm not sure, but there was some. There was a lot groups. of there was a lot of artists. On yeah, scene. he had a good yeah, catalog. Remember. You know what I'm saying? He was just a fucked fucked up businessman. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now, now it was, you know. Th thank you for going to there. Now, it seems like from the Melly Mel days, right? Yeah. Up until the '89s, and then in the '90s, I would say to past '95. The record contracts got got better. What was these record contracts like when you when you guys? Um, well, they was trying to take everything, and then they publishing? were trying to give up. Yeah, they was trying to take the publishing, and I was like, nah. They you, got. You knew they who got, publishing was. I'm oh sorry. yeah. Oh okay. I, I was explained by my lawyer because what happened is I read it. For myself, mm -hmm. and then the at lawyer at that young age, you were hell already, yeah, that's, <laughs> right. that's dumb. And look. <laughs> I read it for myself and what I did was I questioned certain things because it was assigning rights right. to people. I'm like, they ain't write my shit. So why mm. is they getting this? And then what I was told was that for the record deal, that's their interest is the publishing. Right. So I had to give up half of it. Ooh. You know at least they take all though. But well, I, this is the thing now. Okay. The management I had at the time was trying oh. to take the other half. Oh. And I was like, hold the fuck up. They ain't write my shit, and mm -hmm. why are they interested in my publishing? I was mm -hmm. like, nah, what do I get? Mm -hmm. How, if they get 50 and they get 50, what the fuck I'm left with? Mm -hmm. So I was like, nah, they dead on that. So I got my 50, mm -hmm. and then the label got 50. Mm -hmm. But as far as points, they was only- but Hold on, did they out. pay you for the, yeah, that 50% that they took? Nah, they ain't paid no, me. It was part of the deal. From whatever's coming in for It was record. part of the contract. Fuck, this was fucked up. Yeah, it was fucked then. up. It yeah. was worse than, it was like Motown for, for hip hop. Right. You feel me? Right. And then, um, you know, that was the terms, and the points was like, 12 points or some shit Over like 100 that. points. Out you of only 100. got 12. So a point is a percent for yeah. those of y'all that are trying to figure it out. Right. So when they say point, they just fancy talk for percent. Right. And I heard you say earlier, my bad for jumping around, we but I heard could. you say earlier, you said you've um, been in the game 30 years. Now, Over. Is, is these albums reverting back to you? Because we heard they that. about to, right now. Because we, I done filed all my paperwork for the reversion. Is it 30 years? It's 35, I believe. Damn, why would you just told us I've been they changed it to 35? I yeah. always heard it was 30. Yeah. So it yeah, changed well, to 30? You just got to read the, read the laws, okay. read the copyright. At 30, you can begin the process. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, you can begin okay. the process and start filing your paperwork and sending your letters out. So I did that like three, four, five times. I'm making sure I get my shit back. Wow. So 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 what happens if, if you get yours back? They, oh, they, I get all my shit back. And then you, then you 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 take these albums and then you essentially put them out? How does how does that work? Yeah, you own all the rights to it, all okay. the publishing rights, okay. all the mechanical rights, and you are able to now have ownership of your material. Yeah, you can license it. So now it, if you can Entourage do wants to do a, a deal with you yes, to put it, right. then you would be the licensing. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. And right now I still get paid 50%, but they do the admin and then they I do gotta, that. So you don't I know gotta what... shake them up for my shit. Yeah. Like I just finished shaking them up right. for my shit. For wait, real. Wait, what do you mean? Like what they have? 
had they like they white man can't jump and sample your shit. No, and they, they holding his money. I mean, a lot of oh. people sample, but the money but, come from different places. So right. I get my money from Sony, but then Profile still got an interest oh. in it, and I gotta go be like, yo, where my bread, bro? Right. You know what I'm saying? And then they send me some bread. Right. Yeah. God damn it, man. God yeah. damn it. That's I had, you gotta go I had to learn patience though, because yeah. I wasn't that patient back in the days, man. It was really about to go down. De La Soul got theirs money. back as well. Yeah, Did amen. You, right. Yeah, well, time. Time right. heals all things. Okay, shit, shit. You yeah. said time. Yeah. I thought you said Tom. Well, nah, time. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, time. Time, time, time. heals all yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. They, they are up to their 30 something right. years as well. Yeah, so they, they had to fight for it. It was the time wasn't that yeah, well, I, I believe I believe um their deal was messed up. Um I believe they Everybody explained it to at that time. Because I believe they split they split that 25% that was left of their publishing. Right. I believe I might be misquoting them, and they split that 25 amongst themselves. Well, so they that's bought, what happened. Yeah, so they, the label's interest is your publishing, so they try to mm, take as much right. as they can, and then whatever's left, you have to split as a group. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And as I was a solo artist, so right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Damn. So how about um? And you said Howie T produced that whole album. Absolutely. So did Howie T make out good or, or, or this? Yeah, Howie okay. T making out good. Okay. Howie T, all right, and he split publishing too with okay. me. Okay. Okay. And that's oh. how it go. Oh. He's he has the producer portion. Right. The fifty percent. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, hell yeah. God damn. See, you artists gotta listen to this shit because yeah, shit is real, man. And, and they they've been taking advantage of artists for years because there were no standardizations, there were right. no rules. Right. Whatever the whatever you sign for is right. what the deal is. Right. Right. Then. Mm. But as time progressed and we start knowing our worth, right. Just like with the shows, before right. we getting whatever the performer now, they getting a million dollars to perform. Right. Yeah. Feel me? Yeah. Half a million dollars, a yeah. million dollars, two fifty, hundred fifty. Right. They getting real numbers to perform. Right. right. Yeah. You know what no, I'm it's definitely. Yeah. They get uh, um so let me let me ask you, how did it feel, man? Um, I was a kid. I'm 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 forty five years old, I'll be forty six no in September. But um <laughs> but me watching this and me seeing these records, like how did it feel back then to be the man back then? When hip hop really mattered, it, I'm, it you know felt what I mean. Good, but I was always grounded because I knew what entertainment was and what it consisted of, man. And I never let that shit get to me in that way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I was never one of them, uh, you know, one of the bandwagon type people. Right. I never followed other entities and other uh, racial identities right. down those roads. Like right. I ain't let nobody lead me in, right. you know, because right. I was already being abused since the beginning. So right. I was watching. And everybody like right. the fuck away from me. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? It, right. It's that situation. So I kept the I kept a real perspective on everything. I knew what media and marketing and all that was, and I knew what it made you. Right. I knew how the people reacted to you. Right. But I was still on the ground looking at everything from a, a, a ground view. But it had to be because you know, no, right now, um, a person can can, t- can take a record. And they throw it out and it's in Japan tomorrow. Right. But back then you had to actually Work. go market yeah, to market to market. Work. Yeah. And you have been one of the most powerful records in in the in the universe. Yeah. How how did it feel going to your first time to Philly or your first time to Delaware? Because at the time it was just New York. Yeah. It was if you hot in New York, you hot in the world. But then you had to travel to these places. Right. How did it feel like going to these places and they know who you are? Well, it felt great, man. Especially mm-hmm. when you on stage and they singing the songs with you. Mm-hmm. That's a feeling you can't. You know what I mean? You uh-huh. like, damn. You know. Uh-huh. Hey, I'm about to. Give y'all the mic. You, right. know, you feel me? Right. So it's one of those feelings. It's just still knowing the other end, knowing right. the back end. Right. You you know you you can't abuse your power. Right. You know what I'm saying, and right. and that's what a lot of people go too far. They abuse their power, and uh-huh. you know they don't um they don't respect the game. Right. They just run. Right. You know what I mean, until right. they fall and break their fucking ankle. Right. You know what I'm right. Right. <laughs> so let me now um. Uh, it's a mission, not a small time thing. That yeah. video was like the first time I seen a theatrical, yeah, in 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 in, in videography cinema, like you know what I mean, like yeah. in black cinema, like 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 it was like a movie to me watching that that. Yeah, well, well I and think- then and I, and I see that 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 video to me birthed like the Biggie Smalls videos where he he's like you know what I mean, like um like the movie style videos. Right. Was that something you planned on doing? Well. 
I think that stemmed from Think About It. Mm, think because about think it. Think about it had the hovercraft okay, and the chases okay, 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 yeah, and the yeah. helicopters. Okay. Uh-huh. And then it went into the mission where that was another story. Right. There was chases and all right. kind of stuff going on. Karate right. fight. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it just um went into that direction. But Chica Bruce, a female director, oh, wow. is the one that birthed and, and came up with the whole treatments and the video for Think About It. Oh wow. And that's the one where, you know, we went on a whole chase. And it, it was actually the whole theme of it was uh Bud McMelman, uh he probably dead now, rest in peace. Uh, but the old man, the, the the old dude, he was like the symbolism of the hierarchy of the industry. Oh, wow. And he was kind of trying to destroy my career in the video. This was what it was about. Right. And so he sent these henchmen, which was two black dudes, right. to chase right. me right. and ruin my career. Right. You feel me? Wow. So that's what it was about. It was about the white man hiring two black men to go uh. ruin my career. Oh, shit. You feel me? And they started chasing me through the streets, on boats, on hovercrafts, on uh. helicopters, all to ruin me. Right. So that was the storyline. Wow. But it birthed that type of dramatic scenery and the right. whole theatrical elements. Right. And um, yeah, I, you know, everybody started getting real theatrical with their videos. Yeah, I, I feel like you birthed that. I feel like um those two videos, like you said, think about it, um, and um mission. mission um yeah. and the fact that those budgets were open for And the fact like that. I, I forgot it was like to, to be continued, wasn't it? Yeah, like uh, like yeah. a to be continued. I feel like you you created that. Well, Chica Bruce, man, I got to give it up because at okay. that time, once again, I didn't come up with the treatment. Right. I was 15, I was 16 that by then. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And wow. I never shot a video or directed or produced a video in my life. So all the praise is due to Chica Bruce, a female director. You feel me? How come him, yeah. Nas, when they were 16, they were so bright and these 16-year-olds so is fucking... Well, see, highest on Percocet. Well, well, what happened is because back then we was actually going through a struggle mm-hmm. and it was actually real economic hardships that we right. had to overcome. Right. I could see him being from Queensbridge. Queensbridge right. still right. fucked right. up. Right. Right. Yep. You feel me? Yep. And me coming from Brooklyn, we trying to find a way out of the depths. Right. You know what I'm saying? We right. trying to find a way out of poverty mm-hmm. and not jumping into poverty and then having to resort to doing what everybody else in the in the street doing right. robbing people selling right. drugs going right. to jail right. you know what I'm saying dying you right. feel me so it was for me just trying to find a reasonable solution where I ain't got to watch my back you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Well, I still got to watch my back, but not in a negative way where I've mm-hmm. done somebody some wrong. You mm-hmm. feel me? Mm-hmm. I'm not out there doing crime, selling drugs, looking for the police. Right. I don't give two fucks about the police. They right. Ain't nothing on me. Right. But, but what examples did you have at that age? That At that age, the, the examples were everybody dying and going to so jail. So you just didn't want to do that. Exactly. I was right. not going in that direction. You know what I'm saying? And it was easy. It was easy to do. I mean, there was access to everything. We had opportunity. But me knowing better and having four older brothers to learn from as well because they all went through those pitfalls. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to jail. I'm not going to die. And I'm not standing out here on the street selling drugs. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it, and to me, that wasn't enough money. Right. Because when you, once you re-up, you left with yeah. a couple dollars. You going to buy sneakers? Right. Like, I, I wasn't with that. I need real money. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't working for nobody. I ain't working for them. Right. I ain't working for nobody think they going to work me or rule me. Ain't nobody ruling me. You know what I'm feel me? Mm-hmm. Ain't no man above me on this earth, right. period. Mm-hmm. And that's how I feel about it all. You know what I'm saying? So I found my own way and my own path to do it intelligently. I felt like I'm smart enough and intelligent enough to get it like anybody else. God damn, make some noise for that. Now, how did you get the name Special Ed? Mm. Was you in Special Ed? Um, nah, man. Because I was in special I, and resource room, and I'm proud a, of it. Amen. Okay. Hey. Best man. Best man. But how that go? How that go is obviously my name is Ed, but uh, my man E Dot came to me. E Dot from Flatbush, okay. and he was like, "Yo, you should call yourself Special Ed." I had a personality. You feel me? Mm. I wasn't in Special Ed, but. 
I had a personality like a motherfucker. Right. And at the end of the day, after he said that, I thought about it and I could have took it two ways. Right. But I was like, nah, this is my bro. He ain't right. going to be right. acting. Steer you the wrong right. And at right. the time, special education was frowned upon. Right, it was correct? frowned upon, yeah. but I thought about that. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? Fuck that. Because for one, I can change the dynamics of how it's perceived. Yeah. Right. And for two... I'm going to teach y'all motherfuckers something. Right. And for three, my name Ed and I'm special. <laughs> so it was way too many reasons why yeah, yeah. I should right. yeah, yeah. as opposed to why I should. Sure, I don't yeah. give a fuck what class y'all think I'm in right. or whatever, whatever. Right. Y'all going to know how intelligent I am when y'all hear this shit. Right. Or when I speak. So right. I wasn't really worried about that. And I think that whole special ed thing is just, you know, their way of saying we don't know how to deal with this. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to deal with this because some ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing yeah. wrong with you. Nope. Nope. It, it's just a matter of not being the common everyday motherfucker yeah. that they can deal yeah. with. They just tell me and it's behavior, but I know they was right. lying to me. And sometimes yeah. it's what you say. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they yeah. want to railroad you yeah. because you got a brain and you yeah. got a voice and you have an opinion. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Yeah. It's it's some it's it's yeah. how they set when, you back. When I won the BET award, I um we won the BET award. I grabbed my um thing up and I was like to everyone that was in special education. My DMs lit up from all the special education teachers. Amen. They was like, "Can we not use your <laughs> speech I was like go ahead <laughs> yeah I think it's just part of that you know it's part of that like school to prison pipeline right right right, right right for real that's basically what it what it is it's part of the school to prison pipeline other than there are some kids with special needs right. and don't have you know don't have it together where they right. need that extra attention but right. half of the kids is just they don't give a fuck they're like y'all talking to me crazy right. shit like that yeah. like, you know you ain't dealing with that I, I feel you right. and that's why I took the name I was like you know what fuck that right. I'm special ed so what that's right god damn it I'm taking resource so. room <laughs> right. I'm taking resource room my new name <laughs> so look you're, yeah. you're still really young coming yeah. out the gate Lyrically, something is inspiring you, or is it really just coming out of your own ether? Well, like I was inspired by, yeah, I was inspired by the OGs. Like I said, uh, Jimmy Spicer for one, because mm. Jimmy Spicer put out a 15 minute record with like 10 stories in it. And because yeah, you definitely come from the special ad of storytelling, yes, storytelling. Yes, yes. So he inspired me on the storytelling. I mean, Slick Rick. Level. I said special ad. I said Slick Rick. My bad. Because yeah. he uh, told stories about Dracula, about different shit, and it was right creative. It wasn't just like some, you know, it wasn't boring. It was humorous. It was All creative, right. and that inspired me. And then I listened to shit like you know, Melly Mel, Furious Five, and The Message. That inspired me. Howie T, CD3, Get right. Tough. Right. That inspired me. So it was the content that inspired me more so. And I was like, well, damn, I got to be saying something. I got to amuse, you know what I'm saying, confuse, mm -hmm. and, and, and all that. I got to mm -hmm. tell a story, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like even the mission, that wasn't the original story. That was not. Nah, I had an original story that I submitted, but it was too hardcore. <laughs> So they made me wow. do it over. Wow, we write it. And then I had to do the song over, and that's where the mission that we all know came from. You know, that's a very interesting question because they, a lot of people should say back then that the record labels had more of a control over the music. Was it like yeah. that back then? Like, Well, it was. They There wasn't a bunch of explicit records like there is wow. now. You could say anything yeah. because there's no label control at all. all right. And then the labels, uh, you know, came up with their agenda later. But back right. then in the early 80s, right. they definitely didn't want... They wanted songs that could play on the radio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They wanted songs that they could sell openly. They didn't want a bunch of hardcore shit. Mm. So really, until N.W.A. came out... Yeah. They had a certain level of discretion. But what, 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 because you came out in 89, correct? Yeah. 89. Yeah. So then what, 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 what year did NWA, NWA came out? Oh, 89. Yeah. And, and I oh. think the single, the single was 88, the album was 89. Okay. Yeah. And was the single Fuck the Police? No, no. No, I single got it made. It was my it's single. Oh, I told my yeah, my NWA, my bad. Yeah, but okay. the, and then NWA came out and they shit was hardcore and I was like see they could say what they <laughs> right, want right, right okay. but the label didn't want to market me right. in that way right and I had I had hard shit mm. like I was a, a battle rapper right. from the street right. so that's right. what I did and um they didn't want that they wanted commercial did you music. have the Jamaican belt 
Yeah. Okay. I had a few Jamaican belts. I had a few. You got, I had yeah, a few but, Jamaican but, 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 belts. You got to have them Jamaican <laughs> belts. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Sonny night, got a Jamaican yeah, belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the switchblade, everything. The ratchet, belt. too. Yeah, yeah. The ratchet yeah, yeah. and the switchblade right. and the belt. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because Flatbush was a wild Hell thing. Hell yeah. What did they say? Flatbush Massive. Yeah, 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 Flatbush Massive. Yeah, for real. And um, E Hall was, I'm going to tell the truth, E Hall was like one of the worst schools in the city. Wow. Especially when I got in there. Like they had big ass gaping holes in the walls on right. the hallway right. and the boards it was like y'all motherfuckers what y'all doing here right yeah serious so um we had to deal with that and um it was I. Right, but when you in it and you that young and you fearless it ain't nothing but right. thinking back as an adult now i'm like come on y'all had a budget what y'all doing like, right, clean, right. The, clean this shit up man. did you, you know, know Buster rhymes back then yeah me and Buster rhymes went to elementary school together get the fuck out and of junior, here these schools in brooklyn these schools in brooklyn man yeah. Yeah. Academy. Yeah. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. And, and, and um, Walt Whitman, junior high school especially as well. But um, yeah, we definitely went to school together, that's, came up together. That's crazy, and, yo. Um, you know, and, and Rampage lived across the street from the, the school too. Wow. And uh, he was a little younger. He like a year or two younger than us, but Rampage too came up in the neighborhood. Did, did that help the Native Tongue of affiliation? Because Buster was considered Native Tongue, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, probably so. I, I don't know, though. I mean, you know, they had their own vibe with the leaders of the new school. I think mm -hmm. Chuck bred them. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Chuck D. Shout out to Chuck D. Yeah. He, he bred the uh, leaders of the new school. I think came up with the whole Young group. group. Yeah, 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 yeah. He named Buster Rhymes and he named the group. Right. And he told he us named right Buster here. and the group. So, uh, yeah. And um, But Buster's from around my way. What right. happened is he moved to Long uh, Island. Yeah. And then that's when he started mm -hmm. rapping and came back and, you know, Came back to the hood. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, you ever thought hip hop would go this, be this far? Man, not this far, but this is billions of dollars later. Yeah. I knew it was something though because of the energy that it had and the way it brought everybody together. Right. Because even in, in, in the, to just to be honest, hip hop brought everybody together black people, Hispanic people, yep. white people, all people yep. through hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the one thing that could do that. Like, not many things was bringing people together that way aside from money. Right. But hip-hop, just the music and the vibration. Right. You know what I'm saying? United people. So I knew it was very strong. But um, until I saw, when I saw Run DMC, I knew there was a... a a plan. I knew something was gonna pop because it had a frenzy. It just like it took it to TV. They was in helicopters. They had the big chains. They was doing Madison Square Garden. I wanted to be on the Fresh Fest. I was rapping then. Right. I guess I was too. I, I mean, you I was a little younger. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. appreciate Run DMC, but I couldn't really like. I mean, they kind of ushered in that global. The glow, yeah. You know, movement of hip hop. Yes. Of course, Bambada and them were doing it before, but it feel like Run DMC took it. No, they to took it level. to right. the next level commercially. Right. right. Yeah, and that and that's one of the reasons why I was eager to sign with Profile Records because that right. was the label that that's they right. were signed to. We were on the right. same label. Right. And when I was like Profile, I was like, oh that's shit, right. they could do for me what they did for Run DMC. Wow. So that's why I jumped on it. I was like, hell yeah. But I, you know, me going through your music and me listening. Yo, you sound like absolutely nobody. How come you was a hot MC back back then and and and, and still is? But right right now, I can listen to fifteen people that's out, and they right. all I can't even. That's right blindfold. now, though. That's right you, now. That's, that's what I'm saying. If you blindfold me, I'll be like, that's him. Oh, that's him, that's him, that's him. Like right now, I can listen to your voice, I can listen to Slick Rick voice, I can listen to EPMD. I will not say that they sound like anybody. How right. come it was like that back then and how come it's not like that now? Because we all wanted to be original. We wanted mm -hmm. our own identities. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a bandwagon effect. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, this sold a million records. Let I'm me make a copycat. Like this. Yes. So it's really about cloning. Right. Yeah, and you know making saying? it a commodity that makes money. The industry doesn't care about the culture. They just like, this right. works? Okay, keep going. Right. Keep right. going. And they keep pushing out the same shit back to back. Right. Yeah. But what happens to this artist? Because um, I remember um, L.A. Reid. I remember me going to see L.A. Reid, right? And me picking a single off of my album. And me saying, yo, I wanted to go with this album. And L.A. Reid saying, I think you should go with this. Automatically, I'm like, all right, cool. Let me go with him. Because if I make a mistake, then then it's your mistake. Then it's my mistake. But if, but if, if he makes the mistake, right. where's the artist that stand up to that? Well, 
the independent artists now, mm-hmm. can they put out whatever the fuck they want. Right. However, with a trained ear and an understanding of the the way you know radio plays and marketing goes you right. got to have something that is listenable that is digestible right. to the audience right. and something that you could play like you want something you could play on a soul train or you could right. play on television right. and it's not risky right. you know and it's not destructive but now Destructive is selling all right. day. That's yeah. what they selling. Are, are you listening to any new music? Nah, be, be I, I, I barely. Be honest, I barely listen to music, bro. Okay, I listen, I listen to Bobby Smurda. Okay, he's kind of new. I mean, I don't, I don't listen Rowdy to Rebel. any particular artist. I'm gonna keep it real. Right. I, I don't have nobody album. I don't Google nobody name. What I might do is put on um like my R and B shit. Like I like if I could listen to something that calm me down. That's what I listen to. You taking your girl to Usher show? My wife, nah, I ain't taking her to no Usher show. I don't go to concerts unless I'm in them. No, Usher, we, you a bad for everybody. <laughs> Usher's marinating, niggas wives, getting niggas broke up. You see what happened? Well, Serenading. I, 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 don't even, I don't even know what happened, but I don't go, I don't go to concerts. I'm sorry. I don't go to concerts. Yeah. I don't go nowhere. You, I'm not getting you paid. You see what Usher's doing? Usher is, Usher is going... Oh, oh, and he's he's performing, and whoever's like girl is in the crowd, he's going to them and singing to them. You got it, you got it, bad. And, well, and see, he's like, ah. See, well, well, he's an R and B crooner. I know Usher since he was a child. God damn it. His his mama introduced me to him when he was a child. Uh, God damn it. So Not many you know, can say that. Sh- I wish him all the success in the world. Whatever yes. tactics he feel he need to use to right. make money right. and book and stay famous. Oh, he doing it. More power to him. More power. To him. I, go just, ahead, Usher. I just meant for me, I don't go to any concert that I'm not a part of or getting paid. Sometimes, however, I may have good friends that are performing. Okay. And I might go. Like I went to a new edition concert just to see them. I fucks with them. That's yeah, my course, people. You know fucks. what I'm saying? New edition, we need you up here. But you ain't going to the Drake concert. I don't, oh, you know what? When I was in New Orleans one time I went to a Drake concert with some friends just on the random. Really? But it was just me falling in because that's what they was doing. Okay. But um, like I said, I don't really go to concerts like that too often at all, really? man. I don't look for it. It don't, you know, it ain't got nothing to do with me. You know what right. I'm saying? I go, right. I go where they, I go where I'm picking up that back end. You know what I'm saying? That's real. That's or right. if I'm throwing the concert, as right. in the case with the city parks right. and my concert, I got one coming up Sunday. Right. You know what I'm saying? Shout outs to the violators. Rest in peace, baby Chris. I'm doing yeah. this for y'all, yes. man. Yes. I'm doing this for Red Alert, and, and that's pretty much it, man. Well, it's a concert. Let me let me do, do recommend two concerts for you, right? If you would like to attend. Uh, I didn't see the 50 and Buster, and I believe Jeremiah uh, was on that tour. I didn't see it. I wasn't physically there, mm-hmm. but I live stream it every fucking night. It's fucking awesome. Copy. But I went to the Nas and the Wu Tang right. uh, joint, and I kid you not. Oh, we, I went to one of those when they yeah. came to Charlotte. So you going to concerts, but see, no, no, Come no, on, man. Yeah. 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 Concert. What happened is my man, my man Devon called me, <laughs> okay. and he was like, "Yo, we in Charlotte." He just hit me today okay. talking about they in Charlotte. Devon from Wu Tang. Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Um, so basically, that's it, man. They gotta invite me, right? If they don't invite yeah, like me, I don't, I like I don't know. Too. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. know because I'm not paying attention. Sometimes I invite myself though. I'm well, like, I'm, I'm pulling up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I pulled up one, yeah. them, and it was so dope because you know you, when you get to see these groups like that, like Nas and Wu Tang, you would think that Nas would come out and perform, and then Wu Tang would come out and perform, and then Wu Tang would come out. No, they actually did it like as a as like like Nas does five songs, yeah, and they like come out, and it's like I was like a mixtape on stage. And I was like, oh, LL and Roots, um, that looks it's pretty, it's pretty dope that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they got that from us, okay. uh, the alumni. Okay. We've been doing that for 10 Put years. Us on. What a- Myself, Chub Rock, Dana okay. Dane, Kwame, Moni Love, and Greg Nice. Whoa. We've been performing together like one group for 10 years. Get the fuck out of here. never told us about this. Because, yeah. So that's where they got that and shit. Who's from. the people again? Say it again. Special Ed, Spe- Chub, Chub Rock, Rock Chub Dana Rock. Dane, Dana Moni Dane. Love, Moni Kwame. Love. Greg Nice That's nice amazing smooth. collective yeah. of people That's what I'm saying We yeah. all classic Iconic yeah. hip hop artists And we've been doing that shit Over 10 years So when they say Yeah we doing this And doing that Yeah we did that shit already Alright 
Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you, and you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's an honor to be honored. What, what, what do you think about Hip Hop Fifty? Hip Hop Fifty is um. Uh, First of all, what they call that? It's appropriation. Mm. It's appropriation because what they doing now is they putting together these great lineups and then they gonna overcharge the public. Mm. See the concerts I'm doing for the 50 is free to the public. Wow. It's free for the people. I'm doing it with the city. Wow. I'm doing it where the people could pull up for free. I ain't overcharging for a ticket. How do you get paid then? How do you make through money? the city? Okay, all right, yes, my bad. I think Karis did that too. <laughs> oh, my bad. Hey, did that. I, and I pay the artists. No, but see, I pay the artists. Right. Let's get that straight. Are you saying Karis don't pay the artists? I ain't saying nothing. I'm, just, I'm, I'm saying I pay the artists. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All my artists get paid, uh, right, right, right. period. Mm -hmm. That's how I operate. I've been a booking agent for, over, for like 20 years now. Oh, wow. I provide income That's opportunities dope. for all artists. Let me stop you for one second. You know what I always said? Mems, what's his name? Nems. Nem, no, not Nems. Not Mims? Mems, your boy with the, the dreads. Mems, um, the, the, he booked us one time. Oh, Murs. 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 Man. Murs. Totally different people. God damn, my bad. My bad. <laughs> Them damn hip hop names. Yes. Artist. Artist. When he booked me, he did everything. No, he's all, no, he's he did on everything point, man. as an artist would do. Usher, when Usher booked me, he did everything like. I didn't ask for nothing. Artists know how to book other artists. Right. We know how to treat other artists. And you so know where I, I, I got that from? Prince booked me before. Rest come in on, peace. Come on. Yeah, you got to tell us this. Yeah. He had a club. You ain't, you, you ain't going to just say that. It's just like, go, go yeah, more. Drink right. loves like it's a, we love Prince. Okay, Prince okay, okay. Okay, so hold on, hold on. Time out, time out, yeah. time out, time out. You chilling in the crib and somebody say, Prince, want to book you for a show? How does, well, it go? How does that happen? Well, so I didn't even know until okay. the gig was going on and they said, oh, you know that's Prince's club. Glam it was Slam? In that, Glam, yeah, yeah, Glam Slam. Where was that at? In L.A., well, back had, in the he days. Had a couple. He had it in Miami, yeah. okay. L.A. and in his own. Yeah, we did the one, um, we did the one in L.A., I believe it was. Okay. And, um... Yo, I respected that. I was like, oh shit, Prince got a club? Right. And then he booked me. And then the other person is Uncle Luke. Okay, yeah. Uh, so Luke, Luke. Luther Campbell, what up, yeah, OG? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so back in the days, they had like the Goomba Festival and all that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah Goomba. Yeah, and yeah, I'm Jamaican. Fuck it. Yeah. So, so, so Luke booked me for that. Uh -huh. and, and it was like, I was like, man, you you an artist yourself. So when I saw Luke do that and then Prince did that, it put me in the mind frame of, oh, I could provide opportunities for other artists. All right. So that's how that came to be. And I just started booking all. I booked everybody. I booked Nas before. Wow. Yeah. I wow. booked everybody. Lil' Kim, ah. uh, Rock Kim, every ah. Kim. What, I done booked you, it all. What made, you, <laughs> what made you um start doing that? Well, just uh like I said, uh -huh. Luke booked me, uh -huh. Prince booked me, and I respected that. Okay. And I thought that that was cool that an artist would have a mindset to right. provide opportunities right. for other artists. Right. So that's what I do. I provide Provide income mm -hmm. opportunities for other artists. Mm -hmm. I've been booking. That's what I do. Did you get to meet Prince? Yeah, I got to meet him that night. You checked his in, hand? In the, in the plug. Pro yeah. Did it taste like, did it feel like velvet? This thing said taste. What the fuck <laughs> no, you talking taste. about? Not taste. Did it feel like velvet? <laughs> nah, nah, well, well nah, it, it was a Ocean long was time ago. People. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Serenade, my bad. You know what I mean. <laughs> it, was, it was a long time ago, but yeah, we greeted each yeah. other, and I, and I was honored just to be able to get booked by him in his club, because I was a fan, period. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Of He's an icon to me. Yeah. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's not even in the rap. Rap game, right. but he booked me as a, a young rap artist. So I was like, "Yo, that shit like enlightened me and just just showed me that oh, you could do other things. You could provide. Yo, I provided income opportunity for everybody, man. Trust me. You know what was ill about Prince? Like he was so ahead of his time that I heard that so many artists used to come up to him and try to sample his music, and he would tell them, "Go own your masters first." 
Uh, and, and at the time, yeah. where artists was like, we were we were so happy of getting our events. Right. We were so happy to traveling to right. the, to Japan, and they said, "Oh, we horny long time." Like, y'all really say that? Oh, okay, right. <laughs> really. Like, and and meanwhile, yeah, for real. But meanwhile, he was really like the first person that was owning his. He was master. advocating for like, ownership. Like even right. even even um, when he changed his thing to, to the the slave the symbol. thing, the symbol. like that's because they the owned arm. his his oh, name. Yeah. Like, I didn't even realize that, so I had to change my name from. Noriega to Nori at one point. Oh, I had to change it because right. they had invested in Capone and Noriega, so they had owned that. Right. So it was like it was crazy. A lesson so, learned. Yeah, yeah. Lesson he, learned. He, he was, business. He taught a lot of business lessons and advanced a lot of artists' understanding of ownership in the music business. Right. Man, shout outs to and Prince. Man, did you rest in peace. Did you get a chance to talk to him? Anything like something like that, or no? It was just like nah, just meeting yeah. him through that event. That's okay. all. You know, okay. I hadn't come across him too many times right. other than that. Did yeah. you meet with Donna? Before Donna, Madonna, Madonna. Nah, I hadn't I, met I just Madonna. Feel like Madonna was I, around. You know, I can feel like yeah, I feel like Madonna was <laughs> yeah, around. She probably, too. She probably, probably was around, song. but you know, yeah. I wasn't a chaser. Like I ain't, fi- I ain't fuck with people just because they did this or did that. Okay. There had to be situations where you know we we were together organically. Right. You know, we met organically, shit like that. Because right, I see you got a ring on your finger. How long? Was I just got married last year. Okay, all right, so this is way yeah. before this. Yeah, right, yeah, so, yeah. You was knocking down a lot of things back man, then, man. <laughs> It's been been from 15 I'm 51 now So it's been a while Man I've been You know And and it's a thing In our community When you got good hair You get some good pussy Well see Yeah Yeah, That's absolutely correct Just feel your hair Yeah Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, but we got we got to also understand though even though we as a culture glorify that we have to understand who we are as as men and right. and as spiritual beings and learn how to control ourselves mm-hmm. period and master mm-hmm. that cuz a lot of times I look back from the age of 16 when the record came out Mm-hmm. Until now, it must have been wild for you. yeah, it was very wild. But I feel like a lot of that was also abuse, not just from them, but me on my end abusing myself. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of them, I ain't had to be with a lot of them people. A lot of them didn't deserve to be with me. Or the you girls, me? You took them off? A- absolutely. The finger poppers. You understand? So you 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 have to understand your value Mm -hmm. and your worth, and you can't just be giving yourself out to any of everybody, man. Are you Mm -hmm. draining your energy? Because I'm telling you, you draining your spirit. (laughs) 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 No, seriously though, man, we just got to be more serious about ourselves and our self worth. You feel me? Because I look back, and a lot of people, I'd be like, damn. Fuck was I doing? Mm -hmm. You feel me? Right. So it's just about realizing that and not just glorifying uh, slutty ratchet behavior. Where was your favorite place to perform? My favorite place? Yeah. Man, any anywhere they paying me. (laughs) That's my favorite place to perform. Where that money at? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Was was there a lot of promo going on um, back then? Because let me let me let me let me tell you let me tell you what I mean by that. Um, I remember for years. Yeah. I would have to drop an album and I would have to go state to state, go to the morning the shows. Runs, right. That's yeah. what I mean by promo. Go to the morning shows, go to the the retail, you go to the marketing stores, go to the Wiz, the Sam Goodies, and all that. I know I'm old school saying the Wiz and Sam Goody. I know they're not open no more. Right. But I'm just saying, give, to give people a example. We did some of that. Yeah. yeah. But I, I remember for the first five years of my career, I would they would call it promo. I would not get paid. But what I would notice was like the street team people were getting paid. Everyone else, else was getting get paid. paid. Pri- but besides the artist Well they say it was To sell your record I ain't really do Too much of that free shit I'm gonna right. be honest yeah. I went to a few Retail spots right. I did some in stores right. But as far as performances Very few free performances Wow Fuck that <laughs> Even back then Even back then You knew you it You gonna pay me Damn Cause y'all getting paid Everybody getting paid right. Pay me too I did some um, Radio station shows That were Favorable And less than I would normally get But that was For, for the, the politics ra- For the radio, stations right. Yeah For the spins 
Yes. Okay. For the relationship. Well, for, the, for the relationship, yeah, really, because right. it ain't directly for no certain amount of spins, but you gain that rapport and that favorable, you know, that favoritism from the station. You know, I was fucked up when I would, I would do I would do free radio shows, and then I would see a, like a, a artist just a little bit bigger than me going and collecting a check, and I'm like, what the yeah. fuck am I doing here? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I went on well, the whole. You might have needed 40. to do that at that time. You're right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, but get, especially starting out. Right. They expect that of you. But see, my record flew off the shelf. It was right. all over the country, all over the world. Right. So that was the promo. Right. So when I pop up now, yeah, I did some radio station shows, but they still had to cover my expenses, right. compensate me somewhat. Right. You know what I'm hey, saying? It wasn't just like all free. They wasn't dragging me around like no puppy or right. some shit. You feel me? Right. Yeah, nah, we don't even do that. Nah, man. Oh, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Holy shit. I'm just thinking of that times because... Like you got to go, you got to sell records where a person had to pick up your cassette. cassette. A person had to pick up your CD. Yeah. Like, like I don't believe these streams. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, like, like there's, there's kids out there with 40 million streams, and I don't know not one got, person that know one of their words. Right. And they got 40 million streams. Well, so it's automated. Believe. It's automated. Is they buy a lot of that shit. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, bots. Um, they made up. Besides the bots, they made up a whole pay structure out of fucking thin air. Like yeah, right. we ain't got nothing to do with that. We we we, we didn't agree to that. We didn't article, sign. Okay, yeah. We didn't sign off on nothing mm -hmm. saying that mm -hmm. we're okay with that. You mm -hmm. feel me? Mm -hmm. Um, they just decided that this is what we gonna pay, and it's like a fraction of a penny. Like Snoop, right, yeah. Snoop came out. And yeah, Snoop, Snoop killed yeah. that. Everybody, I know, even um, Drez is is on one about that. We all on oh, one, yeah. really, but yeah. they're actually taking action, right? You know, and I would love to be a part of any action because I ain't agreed to none of that shit neither. You know, Chuck D sued the whole. He sued the whole Universal on Amen. behalf of us, and he won. Good, he won, right? I believe so. Yeah, he 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 won. I don't know. I I, I believe he only took his portion of um, mm. what he felt he was owed. Uh, it was like oh, a he's class action it. suit. Yes, yeah, class action lawsuit. Mm -hmm. I, I just can't believe like how bad it was. I don't want to say bad because it did save our well, lives. But shit, it's bad right now because yeah. yo, they getting ripped off for this streaming shit. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah, no, you're it's right. It's terrible. Like if you made your own platform and collected your own uh earnings off of your intellectual property, it would be much more than you getting from these Spotify and all this shit right. going on right now. And I don't even like name dropping. Fuck that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But any of these services, mm -hmm. they're not paying you what you weigh, they paying right. you what they feel like you weigh. Right. You feel me? Right. So that's still unfair practice. So even though these new artists feel like, yeah, 80 million streams and shit. Yeah, but you getting peanuts for it. Yeah. You should be getting eighty million dollars for your shit. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I, I, equity in those platforms. Yeah, something. Um, but you know, it's all really based around advertising and marketing and merch at this time. You know, that's and where data the money mining. at. All yeah. the data mining. Yep. So that's really what it is, man. They get money in other ways. It's not necessarily for somebody just listening to the. And when you say get money in other ways, you talking about the artists. Or you talking about the labels. Both. Okay. Some artists are doing it. Independent artists are doing it and yeah. understand it, and they understand how it is. It's it's an opportunity to other avenues to sell your merch, your shirts, right. your hats, your sneakers, your whatever you sell. Because Leo Combs made up your three sixty deal, right? He made up this, this deal. Did he make it up? I believe so. I believe maybe he didn't make it up like how Rico, but um, the people that use Rico applied it. I believe right. it's something like that. And the thing about it is, for me, Leo has always been a great CEO to me, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he, he didn't have unfair practices with other people. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is for me. But how did he have the foresight to see that records won't sell as much as they will in the future, so they have to start marketing. Because no one asked, no one, you had to cut people in on your shows. Um, I, I tell you how he knew. Okay. When that MP3 shit started. Mm. Because that was the beginning Napster? of the end. Napster. 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 Okay. That was the beginning of the end of uh -huh. conventional record labels and record sales. Right. Because now you could share peer to peer right. online mm -hmm. without paying nobody no mind. You feel right. me? So even though they regulated that at a certain point, 
then, you know, it was understood like, oh, damn, you ain't no going back now. Right. Ain't nobody buying nothing now. Right. You understand? And now it's even worse because they just, if it ain't on their phone, they ain't going to hear it. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to hear nothing unless you hear it on your phone. Right. right. How else you going to hear it? Right. Ain't nobody really up there on the laptop all day everywhere they go, but they got that phone everywhere they go. Yeah. So it's all mobile. It's all uh, online. It's all technology now. Right. And the only way to really make some money is, oh, shit, I want that shirt he got on. Right. Oh, shit, uh, them kicks is hard. Let me right. get that. Oh, that hat is fire. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you sell shit or, or drinks or whatever right. it might be. It might right. be a bottle of this. Right. You know what I'm saying? That Delion, goddammit. Yeah. That Delion. <laughs> oh, my black man. Yeah. Well, that's exactly right, what it is. Right, right. It's this marketing is selling other products, right. and that's how they doing it because records ain't selling. You know what so, I'm saying? So let me ask you, like how we spoke earlier, you said like um, me and you both agreed that artists, you know, uh, booking artists is probably one of the best things, right? Mm -hmm. Because we know how to treat each other artists. Why? Why isn't it more artist based? Record labels Like I, I respect What Rick Ross does I really think That he takes care Of his artists And I respect What Yo Gotti does Right mm -hmm. I really think He takes care Of his artists And that's like It's like A, a one in a, in, a, in in so, so so many Why does it You own your own Record label Rock him own Their own record label You know So on and so forth Karis one To try to like Nurture these new artists Well I, I do I have an artist City the Great But what I did more so Was empower him And he has his own label mm. And I show him How to move Independently Mm -hmm. And how to be an entrepreneur Instead of me trying to You know Own him or diddy him Or some shit You right, feel me right, right. I, I teach him how to be His own boss Right And how to make his own move Shout out to City the Great man Right And um You know He's he's come from You know right. Some uh, adversities Let's say Right And um Now he's flying high man He was just on the show In Coney Island with me right. I give him a platform Give him opportunities right. and And it changed his lives man So It's The education is the most important part man If you can give somebody The information And help them to succeed Empowerment That's what I do I have a non-profit organization And that's my whole life mission Right now Is because of my life's experience As a young child artist I go out there and teach children how to perceive this and operate in this landscape. It's right. called special ed arts and literacy. We call it SEAL. Yeah, yeah. Special ed arts and literacy. Special okay, ed seal. arts and literacy, SEAL. Mm -hmm. So that's sealartsandliteracy.org. You know what I'm saying? And I mentor, I, I go do motivational speaking, keynote speaking. I go to schools. I go to the worst schools too. I don't care where they at. You right. know what I'm saying? I go talk to them kids and get their mind right. God damn it. And, and so they don't come out here and end up like a lot of people yeah. ending up. The mortality rate in hip hop is through the roof. Crazy. Yeah, dangerous yeah. job now. And that's because they're approaching it with the wrong mindset. They're going out here flashing money, flashing guns, behaving reckless because there's no direction. But, but, all right, that, 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 that was so dope, what you just said, right? Because, um, what, what we're saying, we're saying like the, the, the kids nowadays, they hold the money to their ear, they doing, but I'm looking at the old school videos, I'm looking at, them cell phones, the ones that didn't fold. Yeah, was I had mad. one. <laughs> that was expensive <laughs> the bricks. Yeah, yeah. 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 Bricks. So I'm looking, and that was a form of of flossing as well back then. Flossing and communication, because okay. now you have the ability to communicate mobile wherever you at and go right. get that money. Right. You can be out traveling and right. answer your phone and do business at the same time. I was right. doing business. Mm. I was actually the youngest in charge. I was right. really in charge Name of my album. shit. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right. So I was making more. Making calls Making decisions mm -hmm. I wasn't just Running along Behind what people say mm -hmm. I never did that right. You know what I'm saying Because I I learned No but what I'm saying is that I'm talking about The lifestyle back then. Like, like the lifestyle Like like if for some reason And I, I'm not trying to Diss the new generation Let me let me reiterate What I'm trying to say it, it felt like When when they was flossing Back then It was like a responsible Floss as opposed to What it looks like And I'm not saying that They're not responsible I'm saying it looks like It's just people Just throwing money like I just see kids throwing money in the mall, and it's like that's not really that's not, like that. Yeah, like, that's not no even really, real life. Yeah. That, that's actually um, content driven for the gram. That's for that's the gram. Social that's media. That's for any social media. Right. That's what it is. But they don't have any social responsibility. Mm -hmm. Nobody is guiding them or teaching them properly. So that's what I do. I go and talk to the kids that may have an interest in becoming artists or entrepreneurs or media creators, 
and I give them some perspective, some insight on how to think, how to behave, how to present yourself, how to be professional, so that you're just not out here while and out willing and then bang, then you're not there. You feel me? You need to be able to survive this game. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is a long-term thing. This is uh, not, you You don't want to do this for two years and then disappear. Yeah. You understand? And that's what's happening because- they, They're doing it for six months now, disappearing. Crazy, man. At least at least back then they had two years. You had a hit record, you could go on tour, you could feed your family. Now, and what's fucked up about it is no one's schooling these kids. That's what I'm they're saying. They're not telling them, hold that money, don't buy that car, right. don't buy that, that. They're just letting them go and then that money is gone. Special ed arts and literacy. Right. That's what we do. We teach them better. We teach you better. And so you know better and you do better and you succeed. Right. That's what I'm on. That's all I'm on right now. I don't compete with nobody. I ain't out here putting out a new single, this, that, and the third. No. I'm out here talking to these kids. I'm going to the hoods. I'm on my way to Chicago. I'm I'm in Philly. I'm in New York. I'm everywhere I need to be. I'm in North Carolina. Like, just... Wherever it's at, I go. Right. I'm national. Where you I'm, stationed at now? I'm you still live in New York or no? Um, nah. I'm between the South. I'm all over, man. I got a few cribs. I just chill, man. I don't, I don't even disclose that no okay, more, yeah, man. Like, that's a part of flossing. That's yeah, a part yeah. of. Yeah, I'm right here. Come get yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Too much information. Yeah. yeah, but but yeah, you know, I invest wisely, and that's a part of it. Invest right. in things that appreciate. Go buy some houses. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You can get a nice car, but make sure you got a nice house first. Yes. You know what I'm saying? True. Something that's going to appreciate and make you money year after year. Real estate. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What, what are you What are you telling the youth to na- and how to navigate social media? And how to navigate social media. Because to me, that's like the, one of the biggest issues right, right now. Right. It's not to be reckless, not to be offensive. Be mindful of how you uh, direct your energy and to whom you direct your energy. Right. Don't start, you know, don't start problems. There's, there's kids right now that's actually using social media to beef. Yeah. Yeah, and, no. And, and to take... Dying over it. Right, and to take lives. Right. And that's, you know, that's that's it's misuse crazy. of it, first of all. But then if you think about it, that's that sound like an agenda to me. That sound like they making, they designing this shit. Big brother. They designing this shit just for such and that purpose. And we're willingly giving into it. Where before we already were like, nah, nah, nah. Nah, we need to do better and teach our children better. You know, and there's a lot of uh, kids out here that may not have one or both parents, but you still have a community. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of them get caught up in what they would call a gang, but, you know, it's up to the gang to direct them correctly and not to destroy themselves and others. You know what I'm saying? It's a responsibility that comes with all of that. Right. You could be an OG, but what kind of OG are you? You know what I'm saying? Are you teaching? them how to make money, how to get it out there and not die and go to jail, or are you just sending them off to the wall? You sending them out the door with the ratchet. Go. You feel me? You can't do that, man. Right. You, that, that's no not, training. No you training. gotta be a real OG. You can't just be, you know, using children. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't use and abuse children, man. That's not looked upon, you know, that's not good. Real talk. Karma. Karma real. Yeah. And you're going to get all that back. You feel me? Right. Right. What, yeah. What's your... Um, we talked a little bit before, but is, is there an affiliation with Low Lives with my boy Thurston? Oh, Low Lives, yeah. About turning, like he's... The, the way he leads, the way, you know, from showing that whole community that he was a part of a different way. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's turning what was... I wouldn't say negative because they was trying to survive, you know, and they found the lane, hustling gear, right, selling clothes. And you said you never boosted, you never, never shop lifted, lifted, but they did. They did, right. absolutely, they did. you know. Yes. And I grew up with them, you know. I grew up with with them in, in, in Brooklyn, and um, when I came out, you know, they was everywhere. They was around. I went to school. My man Guess actually, shout outs to my man Guess. Um, I used to cut out of school with him, and he used to have moms with. We go to the crib. He live on. Rockaway, feel me? I assume guests we a lot of guests. Yeah. Okay. He was, cool. And then he lived next door to Fee. Okay. And Fee wore the Fee lock. Okay. Feel me? <laughs> right. And then they was all surrounded by everybody else all alone. Right. They was low life though. Wow. It was Fee low, guest low, everybody, oh, wow. right? Yeah. Wow. So they wore more than just polo now. Right. 
Yeah, it was a bunch yeah, of yeah, it, was, yeah, yeah. it was brands, but that was the um, lucrative brand that they could sell and monetize in the streets. I like it that Ralph Lauren actually included them in his yeah, book. Yeah, man. Like but, he, he put them yeah, in their they, book. They partially responsible for the success of his brand. Right. Yep. Just really. in the fact that they was uh, you know, criminalized stealing it and selling right. it, like they stole millions of dollars worth of that shit. Yeah, but they was also wearing it. They was from fly oh, niggas. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we do. Her. I was like, damn. Her yeah, enough. absolutely. Remember Albi Square Mall? Oh yeah, yeah. Alby Square Mall. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah Brooklyn, yeah. New York. That was a land. That was a uh, landmark. Dad and King's Plaza. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Anywhere up and down Fulton Street. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Downtown Brooklyn. Yes. Well, you were supposed to add our show is about giving people all their flowers while they're alive, and we wanted to give you your flowers. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that, yeah, man. man. Yes, sir. You a whole legend. You an icon, my yes, brother. I appreciate I, I, that. I can't wait. I can't wait. And the concert is this Sunday, and she said, come yeah, out. This Sunday, no, no, we did Coney Island last, last Sunday. Week. Okay, this, this one is Sunday it. coming up is gonna be in Marcus Garvey Park uptown in Harlem. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. and I'm doing a Native Tongue tribute uh, for Red Alert and Rest wow. in Peace, baby Chris, wow. Chris Lighty, yeah. and um, it's gonna feature Red Alert, the Jungle Brothers, uh, Black Sheep, Drez, Chi Ali, Moni Love, and um, yeah, we doing it like that. And you assigned to um, Chris Lighty? It was Violator? Nah, that oh. was just my boy, man. Okay. Like we was friends. How did y'all connect? We connected through the industry, um, through him being a violator in a native tongue. Okay. I fucked with them. They was all my people. I toured with them. Okay. You know, I toured with Tribe Called Quest a lot. You know what I'm saying? They was native tongue too. They are. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And um, just being family, man, we treated each other with respect, man. Like, I done, he done took me, I done spent the night to, by the crib just chilling. Right. You know what I'm saying? Up in the Bronx. I used to be up in the Bronx all the time, man. Right. I, I, went, I went anywhere I pleased. All right. On this in this on this planet, you look like Jesus. That's it, <laughs> Jesus. Hey, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I'm I'm basically like Jesus in the street. Yeah, you I, feel I feel me? it. I feel yeah, it. that's I feel, that's what I feel it is. Ordained right now. I feel <laughs> Amen. Ordained. You, Amen. It's, it's, it's raining on me. It's you are on healed. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. How, how much? How much Beijing do you use? I don't use none. You don't use none. I don't it's use all none that. at all. She's and like, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. I had one longer gray hair right here, and I, I got upset when it broke. It, my shit broke. You had bro. one. I had one in my Damn, beard. I got and this shit broke. One, I, mean, I got, got a few. Black I got a few little here and there out there, but this is genetic, man. Yeah, you right. know what I'm saying? Uh, you know I'm blessed. Thanks to my moms so and pops is, who gave the that, drops that's of fruits life. and berries. Just regular eating fruits and berries. I don't put the shit in my hair now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember coming to America and he yeah, was like, yeah, yeah, "This yeah. is fruits, fruits and, and berries." berries. He said, "Hey, name my smash girl." Yeah, yeah. Now that's the natural. That's the mother and father. The, uh, gift that they gave me, man. They blessed me, but and I'm, they, I'm glad. But back in the days, that was like the shit to have an S girl, and you got good hair. Did anybody ever accuse you of having an S girl? Um, well, no. Nah, I think they could tell, they could see okay. from you know the grade or whatever, right. the, you know the grade of hair, you know, right. just my my complexion. They would think I was you know like Dominican, yeah. Puerto Rican, Trinidad, yeah. Guyanese, and those are all people with more curly or straight right. hair. So you ain't never like act like you was one of them to get some pussy or something? Nah, I ain't never had to act. I ain't never had to act to do that. <laughs> you see, hey, all that, I, I ain't even I had to say. Man, I, I just fall back and let it happen. You <laughs> feel me? Yeah, I ain't never had to do nothing for it. You okay. feel me? <laughs> okay. Well, we got a game on our show. It's called Quick Time and Slime. Mm. You're not drinking, so you can pick any one of these brothers that drink for you. I suggest you pick the Haitian because he used to rock the Jamaican belt. <laughs> And he had no permission for no yard mine. He had no permission. I suggest you pick the Haitian because, because yeah, yeah, because he had no permission to rock the yard mine, bro. Yeah, I could right. do it with the coconut water. All right, no, no, no. You have him. You can. All right, you, you got you it. Have him take the shot. Yes, take a sir. Shot. All right, cool. And you, 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 you good? You gonna I'm do the shots of beer? Okay, yeah. cool. All right, Primo or Pete Rock? Oh, explain the rules. All right, explain the rules. Yeah, explain the rules is if you pick both, then he drinks. If you be politically correct and you say neither, then he drinks. But um, if you pick one, then nobody, nobody drinks. drinks. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you ready? All right. Primo or Pete Rock? Both. Drink. <laughs> Drink. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he, he understands the side. Yeah. He understands the side. Yeah. Yeah. But these yeah. is my people. These yeah. my yeah. family. Right, cool, so right, cool. I can't, you know, it's, it's in. Okay, this uh, DMX or Biggie? DMX or Biggie? Yeah. Biggie. Okay. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. 
Guru or Big Al? That's a good one. Mm. Guru. Good one. Guru, because he done gave me a haircut. That's That was my my, my man. Like, my man, my man. Like, hey, time out. I done been uh, to his uh, crib. Nah, Guru was a good dude. Yeah. Guru was a barber on the low? We ain't yeah, low. yeah, yeah. Guru was a barber. I was too. I used to cut hair before What's I started rapping. Yeah, what yeah. You I cut my whole, my whole hood. Carnation. I cut all their hair. But one time we was at the new music seminar up in the city. Uh-huh. And Guru was like, yo, I got to run to my crib real quick. I was like, yo, I come with you. Fuck it. Let's go. So we went to his crib. I got a little shape up and shit. And then we went back to the new music seminar. Oh, so yeah. Guru shaped you up. Yeah, yeah. God damn and my it. man. Yeah, rest in, peace. rest in peace. And my man Holly Rock, rest in peace, introduced me to him from East New York because wow. they was down with the East New York crew. Mm. And uh, we kind of came out at the same time and did a lot of things together. You know, we, we little side shows and side hustles. We did a lot of shit together, man. He was also a youth counselor. Wow. Yeah, he was a counselor, man. Guru Rest was a real dude. Rest in peace, Guru. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, I got drunk with Guru a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, four he, drink tabs. Yeah, he, like, he, he, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, oh, he worked. Yeah. Okay, I like this one. You want to take this yeah. one? Yeah. Okay. Kane or LL? Kane. Yeah. Brooklyn. Damn. Yo, he's super Brooklyn. Yeah, straight up. Yeah. Yo, straight Brooklyn up. Nuka would never stop being no from hesitation Brooklyn. on that. Yes. And it ain't, I'm gonna tell you, well, I ain't gonna tell and you. And we got man. Kane Fuck coming it. up too. Yeah, yeah Kane. Yeah, shout outs to Big Daddy Kane. That's the OG. Matter of fact, he was like a big brother to me too. Right. Like he done come to church after the hood to pick me up. We go to the Apollo, hang out, chill, mm-hmm. go watch all uh, one of them little black exploitation flicks at the mm-hmm. crib, chill, we laugh and get mm-hmm. gigging it up. He was a a big brother, man. Right. Like, I respect the shit out of Big Daddy Kane, was man. His eyebrows cut at the time? Probably. Yeah. Probably so. I ain't gonna I gotta tell Kane. Drink! Well, my shit is fucked up in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> Drink for the eyebrows. Yeah. No, you been Kane. You been Kane. You yeah, can't I pick Kane. Kane. I pick okay. Kane. I know, he, I know what you're gonna pick yeah. for this one. Howie T or Eric Sherman? Howie T, man. <laughs> Brooklyn. Okay. Chub Rock or Heavy one. D? Chub Rock. Brooklyn. I like his loyalty. I like it. New Jack City or Juice? Juice. Is it? Okay. That's why you in Juice. Yeah. <laughs> you got to talk about that. Yeah, how, how did you get in Juice? I forgot that one. Well, I wasn't really, really supposed to be in the movie <laughs> at all. It was like I a actually, super cameo. Some, some yeah, that, yeah, what happened was I read for the part because I wanted to be in the movie at the time. So I read for the part of the curly head kid. Of course you did. So when I went to the set, I went to the set to go fuck with Pac. That was my man. Like, we was tight. So I produce records for we Pac. We got to talk about this. Yeah, yeah. You going to just so, skip over this? <laughs> so yeah, so I went to the set to go chill with Pac. And when I saw who they casted for the part I read for, I was like, how the fuck y'all get a lookalike? Why y'all ain't get the real nigga, right? right. So Pac was like, yo, you read for this movie? I was like, yeah, son, and they gave it to the other curly head dude. What the fuck? <laughs> Who is this other curly head right, dude? Right, right. Who, Who is this Q? other curly head? Okay, so. That was Raheem, right? That was... Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, and I end up taking this girl, right? So, <laughs> so, so Pac. So hold up. So Pac was like, he acted, he acted like he was go, he acted like he had to do something. So he was like, yo, I'm gonna be right back. I'll be right, right back. So he left. And when he came back, he was like, yo, Ed, I got you a little part in the movie, man. It ain't a big part, but it's a little cameo. Uh-huh. I ain't even know he was doing that. So I was like, come on, son, you ain't had to do that. Right. Give thanks though. And then I went out there and they had this um this uh drop top Jeep. You know them Wranglers with no yeah. top and the it had like a fuzzy steering wheel. And, and, a got one to this and I was like, Oh hell no. Uh-huh. I'm not driving that shit. Uh-huh. Thanks for the part, but uh-huh. I'ma drive my shit. Right. So they looked at my shit and was like, I had the red Passat with the Foon, with the Foon Sir rims, the chrome Ooh. shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> only only me, only me and the shop owner had them rims. Right, right. Yeah, so right. I, I spent a little paper on them, but um they saw my whip and they was like, all right, we use your car. So we found a little crackhead that was washing cars and was like, all right, clean my shit up. We gonna do this. Wow. And, and we did the scene. In Harlem. In Harlem. Right. Yeah, we did the scene. But but talk to us about Pac, because me I I don't think you ever met Pac either, no, right? That's one of I've yeah, never got had a chance to meet Pac. Pick up to uh, the outlaws and everyone. You yeah. Know what I mean? So I always Amen. ask a lot of questions. About yeah, no worries. It's not because because I just never I, Bro, I'll never get that back. What it is is I met Pac through um, 
through a mutual friend and through Latifah's uh, crew, I used to date one of our dancers, right? Feel me? Latifah's dance. Yeah, so they were on tour with Digital Underground at mm. the time. And I had spot dates that I used to do with them. I toured with all of them. Mm. But they introduced me to Tupac. He was a roadie for Digital Underground at the time. Yeah. And I met all of them, Money B, Shock G. Right. We, we all tight. Like, I still fuck with Money B now. Rest right. in peace, Shock G. Yes, rest in peace, Shock G. Rest in peace. Yes. And, um, you know, we met there and it was organic and we was all just cool. We, right. we all fucked with each other. When I went to L.A., I called him up one time too and he was like, damn, I'm in the Bay, but I come fuck with you. And he right. drove all the way to LA to come just wow. hang out with me. Six hours away, yeah. right? It's maybe like that. And yeah, uh, we like went that. out. We went hanging out and shit, but then when he came to New York all the time, he would call me and, and act too and then he would come by the studio and that's how we ended up producing for him because he, 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 he said they had put him on and he had a record deal now. Okay. So he was like, if you got any beats, you know what I'm saying? Whoop, whoop, whoop. So, he came through and we put him on some beats mm. and um, did some production for him. So, mm. you know, that was a blessing. But that was organic too. Like, I didn't try to jump on a record right. because he had a deal. I just, Purdue, I did what he asked. But, but it's funny you, you say that because we could clearly see the relationship that Pac had with you. We could clearly see the relationship that Pac had with uh, Buckdown, um, or uh, Buckshot Duck Shorty, yeah. Duckdown, right? yeah. um, Duck, Buck, Buckshot Shorty. Nah, he was a great dude, man. He was a good dude. It, it, Even it with was, Biggie early on. Yeah. Like, he, was, he had like a Brooklyn connection. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was just a, a real dude, period. He was stretching a live squad too in Queens too. Yeah. But, um, but what I'm saying is, was there a difference that you could noticeably recognize um, from the Pac that you knew from Digital Underground days to the Pac that, did you meet the Pac up from, on Death Row Pac? Well, at that time, well, meet, I already knew him, but I didn't see him when he came home and got on Death Row and all that. And actually, I was in LA one time and I was, that's when I used to smoke, man. Matter of fact, let me just say, man, I stopped smoking weed after 40 years. Wow. wow. I'm Jamaican, so that shit come with the family. Right. But I stopped smoking weed this year. Yeah. I just stopped a few months ago, you know? Yeah. Don't get excited. Don't get excited. It's all fresh. Being here kind of like you're smoking but again. It's just control. It's just self-control. You know what right. I'm saying? I control myself. So what I was saying again... We're talking about pop, but hold on. We're going to get back to pop. Make sure we go back to pop. But hold on. What made you stop smoking? I want to know that part. Well, I've been doing it so long. I'm like, when am I going to stop? Oh, okay. How, am I going to destroy myself in the process? I stopped smoking cigarettes. Am I going to kill? Yeah, I had to do that too. When I was a teen, I used to smoke Newports. Really? At one point, I smoked Black and Miles. I had to stop it, like, <laughs> step by step. When I moved to the South, I moved to the South. Yeah, that's what down South did. I moved miles. to the South. Yes, yes. And, <laughs> yeah. Black and Miles, and when you stop smoking both. Okay. I stopped. I, I, nah, long years ago, years ago, years ago. I stopped smoking Newports probably over 10, 15 years ago. Right. And then I stopped smoking Black and Miles a few years ago because I was in the South. And that's like a, I picked that shit up from like Mark Sparks and shit yeah. like yeah. North Carolina. Yeah. They all, they all doing some shit yeah. with them. They and take it out and yeah. put it back in. I just loosen it up like this yeah. and yeah. smoke yeah. it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they used to take it apart and peel shit off. Right. I'm like, this ain't weed. Right. But yeah, shout out to Mark Sparks and the whole team out there in Charlotte, man, for real. So let me ask you, because Tupac, right? I mean, this was a totally different person. Yeah, they got so, to death row. Yeah, so yeah. what happened was I was in LA uh, one time and I was smoking some high grade and I passed out. My my boy, <laughs> my boy, my boys went to the party and seen Pac. Right, right. And I woke up tight. I woke up and I'm I'm in there by myself. I'm like, what the fuck going on? Where everybody at? Right. They at the party. Right. I'm like, I was so pissed at these motherfuckers, boy. Right. Right. And then they come back and yo, yeah, they were high and drunk. Yeah, yeah son, that shit was up. I'm like, y'all motherfuckers, man. They was like, yo, son, we seen Pac. I was like. Get the fuck away from me. <laughs> Did you have a relationship with Big? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I had a relationship with Big through, and it started through my man Klepto. And actually, that's another person I went to elementary. Member? Yeah, I okay. went to elementary with him. Okay, wow. I got a picture online of me and him like this tall. Wow. With our little slacks and button-ups wow. like this, po you know, stunting. Wow. But we was in elementary. We grew up together. So anyway, he came by. I had a studio in Brooklyn called the Dollar Cab Lab. 
Dollar Cab Lab. Yeah, I used that's, to take the Dollar Van to go to church. Exactly. Uh-huh. Dollar yeah. Van. So yeah, Dollar Van. That's why we call it Dollar Cab Lab. 1,500 people in that van. Hell yeah, yeah. for a dollar. <laughs> yeah, for a dollar. Can't for a beat dollar. that. Got the jitney down. Boston's Boulevard. <laughs> yeah. Boston's Boulevard. So, um, the Dollar Cab Lab. What was I saying again? Uh, we done went in a tangent. The studio, going to oh, the yeah. Big, right? Yeah, okay. Oh, so, Clep up. came by the studio, and everybody used to come by the studio, but he came by and was like, yo, Big putting us on, and we going to do an album. Mm. Once again, you got some beats. Oh, come on. Hell yeah. I got a whole team. Mm-hmm. By that time, I had probably like five, six producers with me in the Dollar Cab Lab. Mm-hmm. What I did was I had all the equipment in the studio and then I called all my homies and I said, look, I'm going to show y'all how to use this shit. Mm. So I taught all of them how to use the machines, how to sample, how to loop up, how to mm. sequence, all that shit. And so we always had beats. Right. We had a gang of beats. Dollar Cab so Biggie a beat you said? Yeah Two we, we did like Two or three We did like I think it was Two joints on the Junior Mafia album Oh wow. Yeah Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, Well that's the only album They did But we did a, uh, Two joints on there Murder Ones And Oh My Lord Oh wow Yeah yeah Did you, did you ever think Because um, uh, You know Of um, who Biggie was And who Pac was That they would ever Cross paths And they get this bad Nah, actually, um, you know, I think that was all third party and entourage mm-hmm. shit. And that's that's mm-hmm. really the problem is just sometimes the people you around and what they add to the mix. They add either negativity or positivity. You feel me? So that's what happened, man. I, I think between them two as individuals, they was never in a problem. Um, you know, I think it's more so of the things that happen and pot blaming big for not warning him forewarning him or right. informing him right you know what I'm saying and I think that's where they, they got it got right. tumultuous but as men as individuals man we all had love for each other period we had Warren G sit here the other day and Warren G said that he actually met with Big and he he had a message to relate to Pac he never had got it to Pac and he said that he thinks single handedly one of those messages might have changed the whole trajectory of this whole situation you think you think because that, that lack of communication because you know if they would have probably got on the phone with each other they probably would have said yo bro I'm not beefing with you I'm not doing that you think that that was a, a big part yeah I think that was a big part but also I think there was a lot of fire in Pac at the time I mean you he got shot up you know right. what I mean yeah. um Regardless of how it happened or what happened, the fact is that it happened in our home. Mm-hmm. You feel me? That's like if we go to L.A. and something happened in the studio right. where they at. Right. It's going to feel like, yo, bro. It's going to automatically feel weird. Yeah, it's going to feel weird. So I think that energy, you know, just ran off and took a life of its own without men getting to speak man to man and heal the situation. You know what I mean? I agree. Yeah. I agree. You want to go to the next one? We lost some icons there. Um, where we at? Rest in peace to both of them, man. Yes, yes. Yep. All right. MOP or Black Moon? Oh, man. Drink, man. Yeah. Because they both from Brooklyn. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, and I fucks with both of them. They all, you know, Lil Fame, that's my little deal. Come both on, legendary. man. Legendary. Yeah, and then Buckshot and Boot Camp actually came up in the Dollar Cab Lab in my studio. Really? Oh, yeah, so when they started recording. Who you said? Boot Camp Click. Okay, wow, okay. When they started the Boot Camp Click deal. Wow. And started recording all their albums, OGC, Helter Skelter, et cetera, Rock and Rock and all that. They started in my studio wow. in Brooklyn, in the Dollar Cab Lab. It used to be like 10, 15 of them just laid out everywhere. Hmm. Cause you know, we had a fit. It was a it was like a, a, a not an it was an apartment, but we turned it into a studio and it was different rooms all over. We had video game rooms. We're supposed to have TV Brothers room. next week too. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, shout them out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they know. Just oh, ask yeah. them about the Dollar Cab Lab. Yeah, yeah. I wish I would have been there. Dollar Cab Lab. Hell yeah, you'd have been welcome. We yeah. welcomed everybody. Yeah. Everybody been there. And when they came through Brooklyn, they came and stopped off and, and chill. Even if they didn't record, they, uh, they came by to chill. You feel me? It was a family. It was it was a vibe. Okay. Fab or Jada Kiss? Jada Kiss. I know Fab is from Brooklyn, I was about to say. <laughs> but, we, but me and Jada have always had 
a relationship, mm-hmm. like me and the locks. Like, right. see, certain groups, you know, certain groups we gravitate to just on the strength of realness. And I spent a lot of time out in Yonkers too. I used to go fuck with them down on down the road and all that. And you know, they show love. So right. and I done seen them all over the country. You right. feel me? And I'll and those see if, if Jada was having a show or some shit, I might go yeah. pull up. Yo, what yeah. up, son? Boop, 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 yeah. boop. Like that. So, you know, he's been out to Charlotte. I ran up on him in LA, this, that, and the third. Like that's the type of relationship we got. So I would just say Jada, man. Yeah. I, 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 and I don't know if this is a for skill or for the it's re- whatever relationship. The criteria, criteria for you. Oh, copy, yeah, copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, like this pick right now. Yeah. This is all your criteria. Jay-Z copy. or Nas? Jay-Z or Nas. I'm going I'm to give it to Brooklyn. Okay. I'm gonna give it to Brooklyn just because I'm from Brooklyn, but I love them both. Okay. You know, and, and to be real, to be really real, they both show me love. I probably spent a lot more time around Nas and just fucking with Nas. Mm-hmm. But um, and I booked Nas before. You know, okay. we brought him to Charlotte. Right. But um, you know, shout out to both man. You should drink for that. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm I'm sp- I'm spit. Well, fuck it, no, drink. No, yeah, yeah. Both. Drink both. for that both. one, man. Both drink. Okay. OC or Lord Finesse. OC or Lord Finesse, mm. you can go ahead and just drink again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, you have a problem. You have a drinking problem. <laughs> You're like, I don't have a problem. <laughs> <All right. laughs> o- ODB or Bismarcky? Oh, man. Okay, I'm gonna just have to say Bismarcky. They both Brooklyn, mm-hmm. but Bismarcky, I've I've had a big bro relationship with Bismarcky for thirty something years right. since the beginning of my career. See, like, the documentary is coming yeah, out. That's dope. It's out already. I, yeah, it's out. It's oh. out. I have to watch it's, it then. Watch it. yeah. Rest in peace to Bismarcky. He has always been the most loving, the most genuine, the most real of people. Period. I wanted, and, to play, I wanted to play him in a movie. Oh, okay. Like if a movie come out of Juice Crew, I'm going to go. Play <laughs> and and no, let me did, tell you a little when story. When you watch it, you're going to start. Yeah. Let me tell you a little story about Biz, Let's man. Go. Back in the days, and he changed my perspective on some things. One of them was we had a show in Puerto Rico. Mm. And Biz comes to the show with no luggage, nothing. He just had a Walkman on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, son. Yeah. And, and the whole time, it's just biz in the Walkman. Ain't uh, no bag, nowhere, no nothing. Uh, I'm like, oh, this nigga's real. Meantime, I got all kinds of bag. I got a robe in my shit. I got Fendi luggage. I'm like, and it's only a, a, a one night show, but right, right. the lesson I learned is, man, fuck all this. Uh, if you in and out, you in and out. Wow. I might carry a little bag here and there now, uh, but. Uh, I learned from Biz like, man, fuck this. It ain't really all about all that. Just wow. go in, get your money, do wow. what you got to do, and get go. Get the fuck out of here. It'll yeah, make man. Shout out to Biz, man. Yo, he really rest in peace, man. Connected to so many people. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Biz, yeah, yeah. we gonna get. We Biz keep was going. a real big bro. Yeah, his connections was ill, and and I don't want to ruin it, but people need to watch that documentary. It's it's dope. All right, next one: Havoc or Large Pro. I would say, yeah, I would say Large Pro because of my relationship with Large Pro. I done been to his crib in Queensbridge in the apartment. And matter of fact, that's where I first met Nas at, was in Large Pro crib. You feel me? Because Nas lived in the in Queensbridge at the time, and I went to Large Pro crib to, to get some tracks right. and um, hear some beats. And um, Nas popped in, and we actually had a little cypher. You know what I'm saying? Just me and him and, and Large Pro. So shout outs to Large Pro. And like I said, shout outs to Nas. That's why I say, man, you know, you got to drink because, you know what I'm saying, me and, you know, that's that's the little homie there. That's the little bro. All right, the next one, Karis One or Chuck D? Chuck D. Chuck D. <laughs> Salute quick, Chuck D. Yeah. Now, you know why? Chuck D has always been stand up. Yeah, yeah. And we used to tour. And... One thing I learned from Chuck Torin is that to take this business seriously because while we was wilding out, smoking weed, getting drunk, this, that, and the third, we were going to a truck stop and 
Chuck D is sitting at the table with the whole team around the table and they in some deep ass conversation doing the knowledge. Yeah. You feel me? And I always it's looked happened. at that like, man, I'm out here to have fun. But I had to take and learn from what I saw from yeah. Chuck. Right. And that was to take this business serious and to treat it serious. You feel me? So I would say Chuck D unequivocably. And you met Nas at Large Pro House? Yeah. I met La- I met Nas at Large Pro House in Queensbridge. Mm. And I remember, um, I remember, yeah, we had a little cipher. We was playing beats. Me and Nas start spitting. We had to get down low because the speakers and the mic <laughs> feedback. <laughs> so we were down low, crouching, spitting and shit. But one of the neighbors must have been complaining because this shit was banging. Large Pro was getting all irate, grabbed the ratchet. I'm like, yo, just easy, son. You got to, I'm like, yo, son, I'm like, you got to live here, son. Chill out. Like, what you going to do? Shoot out the window? Come on, son. <laughs> Shout out to Large Pro, man. That's, oh, the, that's the homie. Um, Illmatic or ready to die? <clears throat> Illmatic or ready to die? Mm. He could drink for that. Okay, yeah. Drink for that. He ain't got no problems, but a drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> AZ or Cormega? Um, AZ or Cormega? They they in the same team, ain't they? Yeah, but you still got to pick. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they was like partners, huh? They yeah. been on the same records and shit, right? Somewhat. Okay. All right, you could drink for that, man. Oh, uh, yeah, cool. They, they cool. MC Light or Queen Latifah? Oh, man. I'm going to say MC Light. Um... And I've had I, I've had a great relationship with Latifah, but I think throughout the years I've seen and been around and had more communication with Light. Mm-hmm. But you know, we used to tour together. Like I've shared my tour bus with Latifah and them, man. Like mm-hmm. we we've been um, flavor unit. Yeah, Shaq flavor Kim. unit. Shout out Shaquem. Shout out the whole team. You know what I'm saying? Um, rest in peace, Miss Owens. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but. Matter of fact, just drink to that, man. Fuck that. <laughs> drink to that. But light is Brooklyn. Right. Light is Brooklyn, but you're going to still drink. Okay. Tupac or Easy e <clears throat> Tupac. Recipe. Have you ever met Easy e I've I didn't meet him. I seen him. He was with Dre at a party in the um what was that Mars or some shit back in the days on the West Side Highway, mm-hmm. and um him and Dre came to the party. We were standing outside at the door waiting to get in. That's the only time I ever seen Easy. I seen Dre plenty of times. I done been to Dre studio. Shout outs to Dre, man. Yeah. Um, one love. But um yeah, definitely. Uh, who I picked? <laughs> you, uh, Tupac. You, you Tupac. Tupac. Come on, son. Yeah, oh, yeah. The, the, Tupac. the tracks you said you produced for Pac were any on the albums? Then? Absolutely. Do you remember one the was on the album strip, strictly for my niggas, <clears throat> and one was Thug Life album, right? Uh, no, the Thug Life album. No, the album was called Strictly oh, for oh, My oh, Niggas. Oh, 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 and, and then the other one was. Uh, Post his passing, um, they put out a project and they asked for the record because it was never released. Mm, right. It was called Open Fire. Okay. And shout outs to DJ Action too. Video music box or your own TV raps? Video music box, Ralph man. McDaniels Uncle Ralph, yes. Brooklyn. Yes. yes. Once again. But so Ralph, besides, is, Ralph is from Queens, guy. Well, I always <laughs> see Ralph in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. Ralph from Brooklyn to me. <laughs> Ralph, you from Brooklyn. <laughs> but um, nah, but Uncle Ralph, because he's still at it. He's still mm-hmm. going. Matter of fact, mm-hmm. I had Ralph host the Coney Island show, and Ralph is hosting wow. in, in Harlem with me. I wow. always incorporate Ralph. He always show me love. He showed me more love than most You feel wow. me? Throughout my entire career Like wow. period So Uncle Ralph all day You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know Ed Lover and Dr. Dre I love y'all too But Ralph is my fat OG, man too. That's that's Unc, yeah. yeah Big Fat Five ready as well Yeah N.W.A. or Wu-Tang Clan? Oh Wu Tang. Okay. Wu Tang is for the kids. Wu-Tang now, for you the know children. what? Besides that, man, Wu Tang was dropping knowledge and positivity. Right. You know, NWA brought the age of destruction. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. NWA brought the age of destruction to our children and our culture. Wow. Period. Hey, I respect all of them as men. 
But as the art form, and you want me to speak on the art form, I'm going to tell you what it is. That's where it started. Wow. That's where the agenda started, and that's where the destruction began. Of gangster rap, you would give that to them, or was it Ice-T? Well, Ice-T... Yeah, Ice T did that. I ain't say they started gangster rap, but what happened was when the president sent them that letter, uh -huh. they went ham with that shit. Right. Like, you know, and they had a uh, more of a presence. Mm -hmm. You know, Ice T did his numbers back, you know, he did his thing. That's my OG too, Ice T, but mm -hmm. and W A ran away with it in such a way where it was like, for real? Word. That's all we gonna do? Yeah. You know, it was genius for them and they made millions of dollars off of it, but look at what it caused. You they feel said me? fuck the police early. Yeah. <laughs> we all were saying fuck the police, but they said it on record. On record. Absolutely. <laughs> for the record. And I respect them for that too. Right. Shaba ranks or Buju Bantan? Shaba ranks or Buju. Hmm. Shaba the OG. Shaba! Boy, you gonna drink for that. <laughs> Tell they both from yard. Both from yard. Big up our yard man. Uh, drink for the yard man them. Belly or shatters? Belly or shatters. Movies. We're talking about movies. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, hmm. I would say shatters. You took the one, you took the what? <laughs> You're going too far now. Yeah, you're going too far. Shatters. That's the shatters, yes. <laughs> you took the one, you took the what? I remember they was filming right around the corner. Yeah, yeah I went That's up to the, was I went to the Let's set one time. Let's make up the skinny college. Let's make up the skinny college. So you went with shatters, okay. Master Ace or Jay Wood Damager? Hmm. I would go with Ace because of our long-standing relationship. Right. And I do have a long-standing relationship with J. Rue as well, but I think I've had more interaction and then sharing the Crooklyn soundtrack. Crooklyn! Right. I'm going we back to talk about I'm going back to Crooklyn. Hold on. Supercat or Bounty Killer? I don't know why right. Jamaican accent keep coming out of me. <laughs> well, see, one's the OG... Super and Bounty cat. is actually now an OG. I actually and Super did... Cat, your cousin. I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did, actually, I'm gonna tell you though. I did the first hip hop collab with Bounty Killer. Wow. On my album, wow. it was called Just a Killer. Wow. Yeah, it was on my album Revelations. I actually flew down to Jamaica to King Jammy Studio with the cash. Wow. With the cash right. and paid the man when. You know he what he you know before he had all the hip hop fame. Mm -hmm. uh, ninety four, I believe. Yeah, he flew to the yard with a yeah cash. Yeah, very dangerous thing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. a dangerous guy, man. Don't get it twisted. I'm I, I'm Jesus on the street, <laughs> but you know I'm also you know I'm a many things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Respect, respect. But hey, hey, my family, my family is from Kingston, Jamaica. You know all of them. You know my um, favorite place in Kingston, Jamaica is Tivoli Gardens. Oh, okay. I love it. Enjoy that. I love it. Enjoy I yourself. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy yourself for me. <laughs> uh, all right, this is the last one. You want to take it? Loyalty or respect? Loyalty. Mm. Cause you gonna get respect. But loyalty, loyalty, you know what I'm saying? Because then you know who you can trust and you know you know who you can fuck with. Right. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can respect you. You can scare a motherfucker into respecting you, but that don't mean they're going to be loyal. Right. You know what I'm saying? They can run and go tell the police. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'll take that loyalty. Now, I know I can trust you with whatever. We good. Right. Yeah. All right. I, I, I respect that. I respect that. that makes noise. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a take. I take my respect. Right. I take my respect. Period. Right. But loyalty is rare. Right. Loyalty, you gotta really be loyal. You got, and not everybody's loyal. You feel me? You can always take your respect because right. that's what I've been doing. Right. Like fuck that. I'm gonna take my respect. But Demand. loyalty, you can't. You know, by the time you turn your back, you don't, you don't know. It might right. be a knife in it. You feel right. me? Yep. Yeah. Did you did you um I know you said you don't go to concerts, but did you get to see clips of the hip hop fifty concert in Yankee Stadium? Um 
No. You didn't get it, be, it been on my timeline, but okay. I just keep scrolling. Okay. Scroll. I don't fuck with appropriation. Okay. Appropriation. What do you mean by that? I mean motherfuckers trying to um, uh, come up off of the people. Um, that ain't that wasn't done by nobody I could respect in this industry. That was done by uh, you know the man that was put together by the man that was exploited by the man. And they, I don't know what the ticket prices was, but I could imagine. Right. But you don't think that was a good thing? I think that was a good thing overall. No, overall it was a good thing, but for them to do it wasn't. I, I would have rather seen Red Alert do that. I would have rather seen uh, Ralph McDaniels do that. Right, I would but, rather see somebody in the culture win from that rather than these entities, the vampires, come in and do that. And then not really respect the actual culture and not value the culture. They, they came to me. I mean, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to say this. Yeah. Both Rock the Bells and the Yankee Stadium shit both came to me and lowball me and I felt disrespected like nah y'all gotta pay y'all can't come to me and, and offer me half of what I want right. the fuck out of here y'all not doing that to the other groups right. y'all ain't doing that to run DMC I know that for a fact right. period right. you know what I'm saying but you gonna come to these other artists and think you can determine what they're worth uh -huh. and that's not how this works but Maybe y'all know Drink Chance wants to give flowers while people are here to receive them. Giving flowers and celebrating our legends while they can still smell them. We have partnered with What The Flower to create this movement where everyone can give flowers to the legends in their lives. You can now order a custom flower box for the someone you want to show appreciation to by visiting www.wtflower.com and place your orders now. I love your baby right there, man. I appreciate it. You know, this means more than any award that you can get on some real shit because it means that you're appreciated by your peers, you're appreciated by the people that you do it for. And I accept my flowers with love. Yeah. Okay, no, you, you, you was finished? Yeah. But what I'm asking is sometimes, um, <clears throat> sometimes I feel like the culture does deserve a pay cut sometimes when it comes from the culture like the fact that it's coming from LL it, it ain't come from nah man look, look he got his own brand and his thing going and that's wonderful right. but he don't speak for me and he don't speak for my genre or right. my timeline right. he don't even speak for half the artists that I fuck with right. you understand right I see he's speaking for Queens. That's right. cool, but I'm from Brooklyn. No, no, no. I'm from no. BK. No, 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 no. Brooklyn, I can't, I can't Brooklyn. Allow that, look, a lot. man. Do you <laughs> understand all the money I done took, man? But listen, but I, I can't, I can't say that because I've been on one rock. Well, see, you from Queens? Too. No, 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 no. no. I've well, been well, on one yeah. rock. Well, well, see, he came to you, right? And he but treated I, you properly. Yeah. I, okay. I, I, I well, took see, a pay cut, though. I took a pay cut. I did. I did. I did. Um, but what I'm trying to say is. I think that sometimes it's unfair to like. But okay. hold on, how you gonna take a pay cut? But he charging the shit out the audience. I just can't tell. I don't know. Well, see, I can. <laughs> I could tell anybody <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, nobody yeah. don't run. There ain't no man on this earth above me. I'm your idol, the highest I'm title, idol. numero uno. uno. <laughs> Nigga, please. <laughs> so when you come to me, step to me correctly. That's it. That's all I ask. You right. a grown man. You right. already know. Right. Right. I've toured with LL before. Right. I mean, when I was coming out and my shit was hot on the street. Right. He put me on spot dates to sell tickets. Right. I'm familiar with the process. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm also familiar with the fact that, you know what I'm saying, there was a lot of people that wasn't around for a very long time. Right. But now they want to come back and take everything. Come on, bro. Right. But um, and Yankee Stadium, Nas was involved. Mass appeal. Well, he he kind of that's that that was Nas' whole stance with MC Shan was to say that he's involved, meaning that he took the money, but like he didn't necessarily have everything to do with the actual bookings. Up. Nah, this is what I'm trying to tell right, you. It's a not. Whole entity hey, listen. That that. Even with I'm gonna just say this. Even with a rock the bells, even with a mass appeal, these are other entities involved uh -huh. that are l pulling the strings. Period. Prove me wrong. 
Mm-hmm. But but Master Pill got a hip hop museum. I, f- I feel like they're no, the, hey, well, museum. There, hey, the all department. of that shit is appropriation, bro. Right. And, and there's museums everywhere. Museums right. popping right. up everywhere. Right. Museums overseas. Museums every fucking where, bro. See, that see. ain't nothing but another person doing what they got to do to make money off of hip hop. Wow. That is not the participants of the art. Wow. Call me when Red Alert got a museum. What, what would you have done different? If, if, if they came to you, like you say, you curated uh, right. these. So if they came to you, if Yankee Stadium, let's, say, let's, let's right. take out Mass Appeal, let's take out uh, Rock the Bells at LL. Let's say just Yankee Stadium. Right. They, they themselves said, yo, um, Ed, we love what you've been doing. Can, can you? This is in your hands. What would you have done? I would have contacted all the artists that deserve to be recognized Mm -hmm. and I would have gave them recognition and participation in the event. Okay. At what they ask. Can you name 10 artists you would have booked? Yeah, I can, but that's a whole uh, uh, that's a fucking assignment right there. I gotta dig into my I gotta open my my phone and shit. But yeah, I mean, just in general. I don't even know who was there, who was not. You feel me? I saw some flyers. You know, this and that and the third. Yeah, Cool Herc is everywhere. Right. Respect. Shout outs to Cool Herc. And I'm going to just say, man, Cool Herc, um, you know, he's he's Jamaican. He brought his set outside. Right. He had a party. Right. You know what I'm saying? He did what Jamaicans do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad that um, they appreciated that in the Bronx, and I'm, I'm glad that they attribute that to hip-hop. Are you trying to say that's like normal? That's that's what we do. That's all what right. Jamaicans been doing. Come outside the big speakers. If you look at all the speakers, even in the historical photographs and shit, you see the Jamaican flags on them and the horns. And the, yeah, they sound they sound system. They yeah. sets. Yeah, 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 man. Nah, that's that's nah, a nah. that's a part of the that's a part of the culture. Right. All right. Know what I'm saying? All right. I think Crazy Legs said something like that. Like, like He just said, yeah, that there was a lot of parties around that time. Well, what I want to say, yeah, party's a party. I'm not right. going to blame anything on one party, but what I do want to say is I hear a lot of people talking about, oh, well, I invented this and I invented that and I invented that. Come on, bro. Y'all need to ease up. Talk to DJ Hollywood, man. Yeah, uh, Snoop Dogg broke out DJ Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, man, have him up here, out. man. Like, I mean, it's good. We can all have a, a credit for our contributions, but when you start talking about you inventing shit, like, go patent something. And when you say DJ Hollywood, was that technically the first MC? Well, technically, he can break shit down as an OG and let right. you know what beginning. was happening during that time because right. right. other a lot of people claiming a lot of shit you right. feel me and I respect everybody I respect all according to OGs. the hip hop les- le- le- lessons uh, they say Kokla Rock was the first MC the saying, folk yeah. first MC but then I'm hearing like as far as rocking the party DJ Hollywood was the first person to, 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 like, to rock the, the mic. party well see so. that's between them I wasn't even there <laughs> right, you feel right, me right, 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 I wasn't right. even there right. but I do know a party is a motherfucking party right. and unless y'all started a part like the a whole concept of having a party right. I mean talk to me because essentially that's what they say hip hop was born out of a, a party a, a girl I don't party. think it was just the party I think the fact that he was bringing the breaks back and forth at that party is at that party saying. yes what there's what, what is being said what do you believe? What does Special Ed believe? What do if, I believe? If Aliens came down if right aliens now. Aliens came said, down right now. Said, Special Ed, how did hip hop get started? What would you say? Okay, there was a whole lot of uh, crooners and people making records rapping, uh-huh. right? As far as having parties, yeah, Cool Herc is from Jamaica, and in Jamaica, they bring the sound set outside because you have a lot of oppressed people. Right. The South Bronx was an oppressed people right. at that time, right. but Jamaica has been an oppressed people in a third world world country Mm -hmm. and how they find peace within themselves or a little happiness out of life is through the tunes and through the bringing the sound system outside Mm -hmm. and playing and that's what that's what's been going on Mm -hmm. so cool hurt brought the same thing to the bronx that's Amazing, wonderful. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Cool Herc. We we love you and we appreciate you. Mm-hmm. I, I love and appreciate everybody, mm-hmm. but I just want to get the notion and the concept that, you know, this is not one action started this. Right. Not right. one, I don't think one party specifically started this. It's the whole uh, concept of bringing some sort of 
happiness to a desolate environment, right. bringing people together to unify. You right. feel me? Right. I mean, you go to a third world country. You, you've been to Jamaica. Yeah, I've been to Jamaica. You've seen what yeah. it's like. Yeah, it's very true. Well, how did they bring peace? They bloods and crips as diplomats and Republicans. There we are. I said diplomats? Democrats. <laughs> Same, same, same way, same gangs. They talk about gangs, this and that, and the third. Right. Where gangs started, and this and that, and third. Shit is very political and historical. Why? Wow, what do you think? You know gangs what I'm saying? Politics. Oh, definitely. Wow. Yeah, like Jamaica. Politics. Oh, but but wait, I think something important that uh, Grandmaster Kaz told us what? and MC Shyrock. Okay. <clears throat> they said hip hop didn't invent anything. It reinvented everything. Right. Okay, and I well, think there that you makes go. the most sense. That's my point. Right. I don't think it was a specific or particular invention. I, th I think that they reinvented, reinvented everything. And then the art form of sampling and reinventing music mm -hmm. and reinventing the rap and the way we rap on people records. people been rapping. And po poetry you know? is timeless. Right. Griots. Come on right. now. We talking about ancient shit. You right. know what I'm saying? We're not talking about some shit that's 50 years old. We talking about some shit that's thousands right. of years old. You understand? Yeah, yeah. You know, symbolism. So I think that all made that. the most sense when they were saying that. It, it, yeah, but I love them all. It. I want them all to get props. I want them to get paid. How about right. that? Yeah. How about we fucking make sure Cool Hurt gets paid? Right. How about DJ Hollywood gets paid? Right. How about everybody that did not get paid gets paid? Right. Period. Give them something. Give them royalties. You got sponsors. You got these people doing these big ass concerts, making millions of dollars. Pay the OGs. Well, the stadium. I, I saw that it said fundraiser. I'm, uh, I guess we gotta look into what the fundraising was. Oh, I ain't looking into shit. Yeah. No, I'm gonna look into it. I don't want to yeah, look, go look that into that investigation. <laughs> but my thing is, um, the people uh, should the people yeah exploit. Should the people have to pay more? For us to celebrate our anniversary? Right. I don't think so. I think it should be free. Right. Billions of dollars later, 50 years later, you made billions of dollars. You can't right. throw a free fucking concert for the people? Pay the artists and let the people in free. What the fuck? What are you celebrating? It's true, but a free concert in Yankee Stadium might be a little loose. No. Nah, use the no. same staff. Same staff? And then they sell and limited it. tickets. They, I mean, they sell the hot dogs and beer, right? <laughs> Niggas love them glizzies. <laughs> nah, come but I'm on, saying man. you only got so many tickets. You're talking about seats. a billion dollar industry. Yeah. First come, first serve, <laughs> sign up, whatever. Right. Have two concerts, three. I don't care. <laughs> you know? True. Great what story, Lee. Mr. Lee he said, "Sign the reservation, man." This nigga done fucked up everything. Send him a letter, man. Send the reservation. I'm just saying, man. That, that's that's how you show your appreciation by, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the government needs to treat. I mean, whether it needs to or not, the fact is, hip hop is the really is the number one cultural export of the United States. Exactly. Traveled the world. 10 times over. Exactly. So why not celebrate for real? Right. That's not a celebration. That's an exploitation. That's an opportunist. Come on, bro. I mean, I want to agree with you. And I, and I agree with you to a certain extent, but I also want to see the good. You know what no, I mean? No, I see and the good. Okay, I see okay, the good okay. that we here 50 years later and we doing it. Right. But I right. also see where... They ain't doing it for everybody. Right. Yeah. I, I, Period. I put in work. But isn't isn't that like what 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 everything like like um, somebody's always gonna get left? Yeah. Behind. Someone's like yeah. Someone's always gonna like, feel like, like, like I'm like, not like being fucked for. Recently, um, no. But it's come to the point. Hold on. It's come to the point where they appropriating and certain OGs and legends can't even get into the events. That's true. All right. They can't even go to the events. That's right. disrespectful. Okay, but how the I, fuck you gonna let, talk let about hip hop? Let me just be devil's advocate for a second, mm -hmm. because the other day they had Queensbridge Day, right? And on Queensbridge Day they had they, they hired Big Daddy Kane, and they hired uh, somebody else. So they actually didn't hire no one from Queensbridge. I'm That's from crazy. Rack. That's, I'm from wild. Rack, That's so, crazy. But I had to listen to their complaints, and I'm listening. And Tragedy's a, a close friend of mine, and Tragedy was like, "Yo, he kind of didn't want to. He did. He said he said that Kane invited him, mm -hmm. but he said that when he got there." He kind of didn't even want to hit the stage. He was just like, yo, I just he wanted to be there and, and support a king. Right. 
but not in support of the hood. But but what I was trying to explain to him, which which I had nothing to do with. Well, that has what, what I was saying. Mm-hmm. Like, then you could take it from there. What I said to him was like, yo, a lot of the times it's be an outside promoter. How you was just saying, and it's it's like people from Queensbridge are going to them like a curator. Mm-hmm. They don't know who to go to the curate. They're just saying whoever can get in contact with these artists, right? And then that's how it's happening. So that's the problem. The yeah. problem is the organizers. Uh-huh. The organizers are whoever it gets hired. To, to do the task and sometimes they're putting the wrong organizers in place and they're not mm-hmm. respecting the culture mm-hmm. or where they at mm-hmm. like it took Kane from Brooklyn right. to know to invite right a Queensbridge right. guy yeah right Trad right yes to the event right instead of the organizers no, yes. saying yes, Trad yes, very correct you're a community leader yes. you are OG from the community we need you very true Extra P, right. we need you. Mm. Whoever, yeah. we need you. Havoc, we need you. Feel me? Right. But instead, y'all just go with whatever. And that's been happening since basically since people figured out they can make money off of hip hop. Well, that's they what dissected I, it. Well, that's what appropriation and is. Came in, yeah, and that's and, exactly <clears throat> what appropriation is. That's why right. I said it like ten times. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, because I, I mean. <laughs> Obviously, like, like I see the effects of hip hop. Like, like I, I tell you the truth. One of my favorite places to go is to go out of the country is to perform. Is because I feel like the black man is God everywhere else but America, right? Like it's it's well, and, and that's the that's the whole um, reverse psychology because the black man in America is God too, right? Original, it's just, yes. It just don't feel like it. Right. Nah. Well, because they came here and took our shit and then right. made us think that this wasn't our shit. Right. But we, yeah, over over time and manipulation and media. So, But when I go to like places like Europe and shit like that, like I, I could go to a club and this would be all blank, right? And by the time I come in and I come out, they have Capone and Noriega all over. They'd be... Doing graffiti, graffiti and, right. and, and 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 they break dancing they honor us. and I'm sitting back and I'm like what the fuck and I, like I sat there one time the promoter gave me my money and just disappeared and I'm just like where the fuck is he at and then come to find out at the end of the night he had all type of paint on his hand this motherfucker was actually sitting spray there spray shit. painting <laughs> our shit and then motherfucking and then then well, see, then set it up for 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 as soon as us to walk out it would be a break dance. Uh, concert as soon as we walked out. So me and Cabron walked out and these guys just break dancing and just battling like it's B Street right. but they are in Europe and I'm like hip hop so, is living out there. So let me, than, let me speak yeah. to that. Yeah. In the Vatican in European countries they worship melanated people. Melanated me skin. Yes. But here in this country is the opposite mm. because they mind fucking us and took our land and took our country mm-hmm. so they can't educate you and, and worship you at the same time they oppressing you but all around the world and they've done it already all around the world but yeah. the history is known right. they're educated they know who the melanated are right you understand right but they can't tell you that here can they right. tell you that here and you figure out who and what you are it's over for them right you feel me? I, I remember uh, going overseas when Obama was in office. Mm-hmm. And that was like the first time I kind of didn't feel racism. They was like, Obama! I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, they didn't really know like that. That was like kind of hey, racist too. Hey, like, it's like every time they seen a black person, it's like America. I was like, America. It's like, man, Obama! I was like, oh, they, shit. They secretly worship you. Yes. They, they kiss your statues. Yes. They pray to your images. Right. You understand me? Right. You been to Japan? No. Okay. Japan is like that for the black man, I'm telling you. That's why you look at Stephon Marbury. Stephon Marbury. I'm telling you, the yeah. world is yeah, like yeah, that for true. the black yeah. man. The melanated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay? No, very true. The whole world is like that. But here in America, they cannot do that. It's the opposite. Right. Right? Because they we still under the mind control. Mm-hmm. Well, right. most are. Right. I ain't under shit. Right. I know why. I'm Jesus on the street. Right. Amen. Yeah, nah, listen, <laughs> if you had anything to do over, what would you do over? What would I do over? Yeah. Mm. Just maybe some of the business, mm. some of the business moves mm. that I've made. Mm. And um, 
some of the deals mm -hmm. that I agreed to or the deals that I made, I would change. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about it. Otherwise, our uh, life's experiences make you who you are, right? Mm -hmm. And if I changed anything other, you know, I might not be or have the same perspective or mindset. You feel me? Because I think a lot of people come in the game with a strong mind, but then they get led, they get, you know, delusioned by whatever. You know what I'm saying? Drugs, fantasies of, you know, delusions of grandeur. Grand, right. Yeah, shit like that. And then they turn into something else. Mm -hmm. They save themselves. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It's about how can I win? How can I save myself? How can I become rich? Mm -hmm. How can I get the mansion and the yacht? You feel mm -hmm. me? And they forget about the plight of the people. Right. They forget about their families, right. their children, right. et cetera. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. If you if you if aliens came down, I know I touched on this. I love there. aliens. Come but on. If now. aliens came down yeah. and they <laughs> asked you, I want to learn hip hop, and you had one album to give them, just one album for the aliens to go back into their spaceship or whatever they Martian, whatever the fuck. I they give are. them my shit. Youngest in charge. Goddamn, it's my back. Youngest in charge. So the first thing they go here is I'm your idol, the your highest, highest idol. idol. Do Do I'm half Puerto Rican and I'm speaking, so did you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes, man. I mean, I mean, you know, because uh, honestly, you know, I know we've been playing around, but you looking so good. You like I tell these tell that. these young brothers like how you can maintain this type of regimen because, like you said, I think you say you're 51, and, yeah. and you looking like you fucking fucking 21, bro. Right. Like, for well, real, I, I, I'm trying to look for the Beijing. It's not coming right. out. It's no, it's not. It's no <laughs> Ain't not coming out. Yeah, nah. yeah, 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 yeah. Shit is all real. Well, one thing is. Um, Genetics. Okay. One thing is genetics. Okay. Okay. That's for one. Okay. For two is exactly what you put into your body, what you consume. You're vegan? No, not yet. Okay. I'm kind of more pescatarian-ish. Okay. But I'm I'm more we're, conscious. We're I'm more conscious than anything. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Okay. When we're younger, we tend to eat anything and we eat anything they sell. Uh -huh. But when I was younger, I was conscious. And I stopped eating pork at a very young age. How about oxtail? I stopped eating beef. Mm -hmm. I stopped eating pork. Mm -hmm. I stopped eating chicken for the most part. I eat chicken sparingly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So not that much vegetarian. <laughs> yeah, not that right. <laughs> but the fact is, the fact is, I'm, I'm drinking right. the proper liquid. Right. I don't fuck with sodas and all that. <laughs> fruits, fruits and vegetables, right, fruits right. and berries, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Fruits, fruits and, and vegetables yes, yes. Yeah. is what you eat. You are right. what you eat. Right. The energy you get when you eat fruits on a salad is right. way different than you eat a plate of steak and you go to sleep. Right. Yeah. Very true. You understand? Very so true. you have to deal with reality. Right. And you have to deal with what's going to sustain you and keep you alive and right. keep you in good physical condition. As a Jamaican, what was the hardest food to cut off? Probably just the beef. Yeah. Oxtail. I love Oxtail. pepper steak. I used to love pepper Ooh. steak. Ooh. Yeah, man. Ooh. Oxtail, curry goat. Come on, man. Curry goat. Yeah, I stop all of that. I might, once a year, I might eat my mom's curry goat. She'll make some okay. and I'll eat some curry goat once okay. a year. Okay. But even when I do that, it's different. I feel uh, different. Uh. Smell different. Shit you looking just... at goats different. You be like, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Once a year, nigga, you fall your body. But, but See you, you have, next year, buddy. You have to know <laughs> what these things do inside your body. Right. They stay right. in your body they and they rot. You. Yeah, right. They rot, and that cannot be good for you or your digestive system. I tell you, I was vegan for like eight months to, to a year, and the favorite foods I ever ate when I was had that vegan experience had always came from the island. And uh, came from Vegetarian Delight. It's uh, a place out here. Yeah. They would coconuts. coconuts well, co it's all it's all, all, all Jamaican. It's all like, seasoning. Right. Seasoning determines everything. Right. Like I love salads, and you can just put whatever dressing you like. Right. Right. But I love like when I say I love salad, I love salad, man. Right. And fruits, fruits is the best shit on the earth. What are you a kale guy? 
Nah, kale is cool. I put everything. I like uh, spinach, lettuce, okay. romaine, romaine, spring mix. Okay. And I do a little bit of food science, so I don't do too much iceberg lettuce and okay, shit that iceberg. has no nutritional yeah. value. Oh, iceberg don't got no nutritional value? Nah, at all. Zero. Now y'all tell me. That shit is water. Jesus. Okay, yeah, but, yeah. But for the most part, you just have to understand what you're eating and how it helps you. Okay. And and do that, man. You know, I'm into, you know, the ginger Turmeric, yeah. all kind of shit, lemon. Yeah. Like I, I deal with natural substances, man. That's what we have to get back to is shit with one ingredient, what it is. Throw it up. Mm-hmm. You eat an That's orange, it. you know it's a fucking orange. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you eat some other shit, they got a whole list of shit on you. Yeah, got way too much. There you go. Big up Moni Love too. She's she's like on that too. She's Jamaican too. It's y'all Jamaicans with the yeah. good jeans. Yeah, but yeah. Don't get it twisted. There's some Jamaicans with some fucked up jeans. Oh out yeah, here now. nah, nah. Right. It's the individual. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's 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 how much you care for your state self, of mind, okay. your temple, uh-huh. and and your consciousness of what you are doing to yourself. It's just like me. Stop. I stopped drinking. Yeah, I used to drink. I stopped smoking. Yeah, I used to smoke. Uh-huh. So and not all the time was I who I am now. All right. You take edibles or none of that? Nah, I don't even do Nothing. edibles. Or not to take that. Because because um, I stopped drinking because alcohol alcohol causes poor behavior. That's right. Alcohol is poison. That's right. And um, would you drink a whole bottle of cough medicine at once? Yeah, and that was. has that has a per, that well, has a percent of alcohol. He already did. <laughs> yeah, see, you also got to be mobile. You got to what a body in motion stays in motion. So you got to do shit too. I walk. I ride bikes. I swim. I do whatever. You feel me? I love the ocean. All right. Love the ocean. So who who, who you who you battling in versus? Ba- I, first of all, if I got. Swiss call you right now and say. If Swiss call me, he got to tell me a dollar amount. Damn. Period. I want to hear he about. I need money. to hear about the money. I need he's, to hear about, about what it's business. worth. Yeah. I'm not doing this for TV. Right, right. I don't need to be on TV right. like that. I I've been that. on TV for 30 years. Yeah, I'm not that. doing this just to have have an episode of some shit right. on TV. Right, I'm right. doing this show because I respect what y'all doing. Thank you, my brother. Yeah, we appreciate that. <laughs> And and, and, so, and you have to tell your story yes, right. Or else somebody else yes, Going to try to tell your true. story right. very true. So I'm here to inform I'm here to educate And right. let it be known But Period. again let me just um, um, ask um, Let's suppose Swiss call you and say uh, uh, um, Special ad I want you to pick your opponent Who, who would in your mind You say I Let's suppose the dollar amount is great Right <laughs> Dollar amount is great I pick anybody I don't okay. give a fuck but who Swiss, would you, you want pick to them. You pick them Swiss <laughs> Do a poll okay. Vote Y'all okay. niggas do whatever y'all want Put whoever you want on that stage Okay It can don't I, matter can I to me throw some names at you Yeah I'm gonna do I'm gonna get them all Buckshot shorty Hell yeah Okay I versus with anybody That's the point Okay I versus with anybody Y'all pay me I'm gonna be there for I'm gonna versus anybody. Who else you think? Uh has? Shit, I'm versus in anybody now. Shit. Big Daddy Kane? Nah, I'm yeah. Kane win already though. No, I'm just saying for him. I just wanna hear. Granddaddy, you would have been a good one. Rest, Rest in peace. peace, Granddaddy. Yeah. Uh ooh. That's a, that's a bunch Man, of people. listen, I versus He's not gonna anybody. Turn down any challenge. I ain't turning down no challenge. That's the whole point. That's how I got where I am today. Cause I ain't turned down no. I used to walk down the streets of Brooklyn and just run up on ciphers. <laughs> right, right. Like me, skinny. I used to be like a buck right. thirty, right. like right. skinny little nigga. Right. Like right. I run up on anybody and battle anybody. Matter of fact, when I first got to Erasmus, you said that earlier. You was a battle MC at first. Yeah, right? when I first got to Erasmus Hall High School. Right. My first week in high school, I looked for the nicest MC and I battled him for his name. Wow. Damn. Straight for the name. I'm going for the gusto, right. jail style mentality. Right, right, exactly. We going, we're the hardest, and where it's at. Right. Okay, come on. So that's what I did, man. I, 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 was a, I challenged anybody. All right. You know what I'm saying? I walked down the street. I don't give a fuck how tough anybody look. I'm, I'm taking titles out here. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, man, you a motherfucking legend, man. Amen. Man, I'm so glad you got to um, sit down with us, yeah, man. Just let you, you know, this is your platform. If you want to come in here and promote pink toenails, we don't care. Oh, no, like, nah, we, we don't do it. This is, this, this is hip hop. I promote this the is lady your, with nah, the pink nah, nah, toenails. Nah, 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 I'm <laughs> But you know, this, we want you to know, man, because you know, in our our our, our genre, our music, so many people want to say that you got ten years or more that you know uh, you're old school and you're washed up, and I hate that because you know. 
don't have that in jazz. They don't have that in rock and roll. They don't have that in any other right. genre. They, they, they don't even have it in, 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 in dance hall. You know what I'm saying? Like they right. like like um so the fact that they have it in hip hop, this is something that me and my partner wanted to change from the beginning. We was just like, you know what? If we got a platform, we want to salute the people who's been there before us and give them their flowers and tell them to their face. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Right. So now everyone wants to give people flowers. Me and him, we didn't invent the phrase, but we made it. Reinvented popular. it. We reinvented it. <laughs> yeah, we reinvented right. it like hip hop did. And you are one of the people that I definitely want to give the flowers to because you deserve it. You are a legend. You are an icon. You continue to do it. You out here monkey footing the games because you out here still throwing shows, doing what you got to do, man. I want to show you love. I appreciate it. And, and, and I forgot to ask, what you got going coming up besides the shows? Um, You got anything else coming up? Uh, well, more shows. I'm doing, okay. we going out to Chicago. What I've been doing is this Stop the Violence movement. That's you beautiful. feel me? Um, shortly after uh, PNB Rock got killed, wow. uh, Corrupt called me. And um, he was like, yo, man, we need to, you know, do something about this. We need to unify because he always called me uh, for enlightenment, you know what I'm saying, as a big bro. That's dope. And um, I agreed. And I said, you know what? Let me see what, what we can do to make all of this happen. And um, we started bringing everybody together on these calls for the Stop the Violence movement. And um, that's a part of my mission, what I'm out here to do um, is just utilize all of our resources and our influence to help these youth redirect their energies because the energies it, it's up in the air man they, right. it's getting very negative and very 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 hectic out there for for kids right. yeah. these are our children man right. these is like teenagers right. we can't let them destroy themselves so that's my mission so I'm going around everywhere and I'm talking to all the kids I can um, all ages and, and just letting them know and based on giving them my life's experience what I had to go through you know from a child till now right. and showing them as an example of you can be successful you don't have to compromise your integrity Right. You don't have to go follow the crowd. You don't have to, you know, follow the gang mentality if right. it's not positive. Right. Because there are organizations that are positive mm. and have changed how they approach that whole uh, gang, quote unquote, mm. mentality. So we turn in... Uh, we turning everything into a positive right now. That's my whole goal. I ain't in no competition. I don't care about the record industry. It, it, it's done enough when, damage. When, when did you get to that level where you were just like, you know what? Um, a few years ago. Okay. It, it's been some years now. Okay. I just see everybody like, it's like a rat race. Mm -hmm. I see what they do for money. I see how they use and abuse artists mm -hmm. and how um, they just undermine people's value and and the 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 work that they put in mm. you know what i'm saying it's like shit going back and forth with 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 OG artists pitting them against newer artists and right. doing all kind of dumb shit. Like this is not a competition in that sense. Yeah. I think we need to bring it back to something more um more more pure, man, more organic and, and stop stop trying to create uh rivalry all the time. I I I remember me looking up to artists that came before me. Do you think these new artists, they, they lost that? Yeah, I think they lost it because we're not going back out there and speaking to them and engaging and teaching them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I do. That's my whole point and my purpose is, is what I'm doing with my organization, um, Special Ed Arts and Literacy, SEAL. And that's my whole mission right now. I don't care about... Uh, the music game and the the industry because I know what it comprises, what it consists of. It's it, it's it's a road to destruction for most. So I ain't even worried about that no more. I'm worried about how do I change the minds of these children so that they don't destroy themselves. Mm. You don't have to die to be famous. Mm -hmm. You understand? You mm -hmm. don't have to die to be famous. Or get hurt. Or get hurt. Because that's what a lot of people are doing now, too. They're getting hurt, and then it's like they survived a, a stabbing or something like that. And then right. They're a new and, guy. And, and it's the mentality. It's like they're going out here. They've taken stunting to a whole nother level. Right. right. And then they are endangering themselves, mm. and then they have to arm themselves, mm. which is causing more gun violence. Mm. 
You feel me? And then they get their feelings hurt and then they want to pull the gun out because they feelings is hurt. Right. You understand? Right. That's not what this is based on. You you use a firearm to protect yourself, right. to protect your life, right. not to go and threaten or endanger or take someone else's life or rob somebody. That's not what you use a firearm right. for. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's called crime. That's criminal. Right. You feel me? Right. And, and we don't want them to believe that that's what they need to be out there doing. No. Right. I mean, shit, I've had a fire on my entire life. Mm. I never accosted or threatened anybody with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's for me to defend myself right. and my family and what I have, my possessions. I'm not out here flashing. Right. I've had a right. firearm since I was a teen bef before I made records. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Before, I, before the age of 15, I had a firearm. Right. And I never had to pull it out and floss it. But not legally. Nah, okay. but now it's legal. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, ever since I became of legal age and got into a legal situation where I could <laughs> right. do it legally, right. mm. we good. Right. You feel me? Right. And that's a right. That's our that's our rights as right. uh what they call this. Citizens. citizens. There we go. Right. This is my right as a citizen. I'm just right. exercising my right. Right. As that's you should. all. Yeah. So and responsibly, not to intimidate or harm anybody. Right. And that's the thing. They out here trying to intimidate and harm people. And broadcasting it. And broadcast, yeah. And that's not what we want. That's not what we own. Right. You know what I'm saying? We want to just teach the kids better from a young age so that they don't grow into... Because when the, once they become a teenager and they mindset oh, yeah. and they ready to go, they ready to go. They're ready to go. Yeah. So, so I try to get them a little earlier. And, mm -hmm. and even with the teens, I talk to them too. Mm -hmm. But once they go on and they, you know, clap that thing a few yeah. times, they get that energy. That power, yeah. Yeah, they go to their head. So we, we got to stop that. We got to prevent that, yeah. you know. And the one thing I can say and the one thing I would love to say. Please. And I would say to all the youth out there, all you... Thugs, have you ever pointed your gun at someone else other than your own brother or sister? Mm. Have you ever, ever? No, I, I don't see you pointed at anyone else except yourselves. You might as well point it in the mirror. You feel me? Mm. Because you only killing yourselves. You're not standing up for yourselves against the real oppressors against the real people that are really oppressing you and taking from you and causing you to be in poverty and in these conditions. You're not pointing a gun at them. You point it at your own family. Mm. Don't point your gun at no melanated people. That's all I'm saying. Stop pointing your guns at melanated people. That's like killing yourself. And I don't, I don't want you killing yourself, mm. right? Damn, man, that's, this, that, was, that was hard. I don't even know how to, what to do. Take like it that. the picture. Yeah, come on, let's take it. <laughs> Yo, man, once again, special that, man, we appreciate you, man, coming through, man. Like I said, this is your house, man. Anytime you want to come and promote it, man, I appreciate it. Yeah. We, we, appreciate, we appreciate you showing uh, um, the OGs that you can actually still maintain in, into this, in, this environment. And I, I, I really want to respect your company uh, um, because... That's what well, artists should be taking care of artists from the beginning. I, I knew that. I didn't know that you actually had a company that was, was, was catering to, towards that. So um, I knew that from from from, from Murs. Murs right. was the first yeah. person. But I was like, yo, he he kind of like did everything everything I asked for. Like he already did it. So I, I love that man. I just want to continue to support you. Give you all blessings, man. Like I, I said, appreciate man, that. And give you your flowers, my brother. Amen. Yeah. I appreciate it. Got the oh, flowers. Yeah. Bye. Bye.